Good evening. Good evening, y'all. Welcome to the channel. If you notice, it's a little bit of a different background because I am in my office upstairs and I switched things around a little bit. So, um, how are y'all this evening? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Um, welcome. So we're going to be talking about you are what you think you are, because it seems like there's an issue these days. And a lot of women, especially, don't know who they are, or they allow people to tell them who they are, or they listen for other people's opinions about who they think they are. And so I wanted to do this video to remind every everyone, you are what you think you are. <laughs> okay, welcome members. God is wild red in the house. Y'all become a member too and get your level up emojis. Thank you, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, get in here, click the like button as you arrive. Subscribe if you are new. And say hello. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, if someone tells you who you are and you believe them, you have accepted their opinion of you. Now, if they're giving you compliments and things that you agree with, then by all means, take that and apply to yourself. But if there's something that you don't like that someone is saying and um, describing you as, then don't accept it. It's that simple, really. And so many people, you know, they click on YouTube and, and they watch video after video of people, you know, telling them who they are, what they, how they're going to live, how they're going to end up. And I, I don't know if any of you guys are literally taking that stuff to heart because a lot of times it's what you believe and it's what you identify as that makes you who you are. So y'all hit the like button if you agree. We have to agree with whoever it is telling us who we are. We we'll have to agree with that. And so many people are unknowingly agreeing because like, if you have self-doubt and it starts to sink in after someone has told you something about yourself, it means you kind of secretly agree with them and you're taking it to heart and you're now thinking and, you know, shifting um, in that direction of what they think about you and applying it as if it is your reality. So that's why I tell women all the time, Make sure that you love yourself so other people can't come in and try to tell you about yourself or this or that, okay? Um, that's why you said the power of spoken words. Yes, J, yes, J9, sprinkle, sprinkle, member in the house. Um, so that goes with anything, insults compliments. Some people like to give backhanded compliments in disguise, which is you know, insults in disguise. And you don't have to accept those either. You know, um, if you feel a certain way and identify a certain way and love yourself a certain way and see yourself a certain way and think of yourself as a certain way, that's who you are because only you can tell the world who you are. Only you, no one else, because <laughs> they don't know you. And they are not you. So that's why I say anybody that tries to tell you who you are, how you're going to end up, that's their opinion. Even if I tell you, it's only my opinion. I don't, I don't walk in your shoes. I don't know who you are. So take what you like. And that is with everybody, but not what they're giving unless you agree with it. So first you have to agree. So, sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. So,
So yes, yeah, speak your expectations exactly, J9. So allow allow a lot of things to go over and pass you and don't accept what everyone else is saying to you if you don't agree. This is what helps uh, keep your self-esteem intact and not, you know, whittled away every time you click on a video that's talking bad about, you know, um, maybe something you represent or something you think you are or something that you are. So, um, you know, a lot of that stuff is simply clickbait. It's a, it's clickbait and it feeds off of your anger and uh, frustrations with yourself, not you, but yours. I mean, not them, but with yourself, because no person would click on a video that was going to literally um, put them down. No one would click on that. If you click on that, it is a self it is a level of self hate and self abuse. Even if you're just curious to see what these people are going to say, you know, it's still a level of self-abuse because sometimes what they say you may not agree with, but you are allowing it into your mind. So that's why I say we don't like you don't click on something that you don't want. You don't put something in your cart <laughs> that you don't want. You don't sit there and pay and click on somebody's and click on somebody's stuff and put it in your cart that you don't want because when it arrives you're going to be upset. I will repeat that. Clicking on certain things that lower your self-esteem is like ordering something you don't want. And when it arrives, you already paid for it and guess what? It's yours. <laughs> So don't do that. Avoid all of those types of negative, um, you know, things being put into your mind. And if you feel like you don't agree with the video, just by the title, don't even click it. Maybe if you feel empowered enough to go make a reel, a post, if you have a YouTube channel on what you are and what you want to be and what you are representing, that's better. That's counteracting and creating exactly who you want to be and helping other people do the same. Okay. <laughs> so just remember that, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to indulge in people just because people are gossiping and saying, hey, did you hear what this person said? Did you hear what that person said? No, because I don't care what they said. And a lot of people will come into the comments and ask me about, do I agree with this person? Do I, I don't know that person. I don't want to know that person. I would never know that person, period. I agree with what I say. <laughs> okay. That's all I can't agree with because I'm saying it. So I don't like, I, I'm not the type of person that rushes and runs to some controversy because it's, you know, the talk right now. I don't care. Let, I mean, people do stuff for clickbait for that very reason. For the very reason, because they know everybody and their mama going to go rush to click on what everybody talking about and, you know, get an earful of something they may, they might not even want it. <laughs> so, yes. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Is it better to date lots of people before being in a committed relationship? Yes. <laughs> Heck yes. Um, you'll you'll thank yourself later if you do. <laughs> Just don't get pregnant. <laughs> okay. Rachel Jones. It doesn't say that you're a member because your um your name isn't highlighted. Maybe you're a member on the other channel. You have to be a member on here, and it's a monthly thing. Yeah. So maybe you have to rejoin. Or something like that. Sprinkle, sprinkle. It's it's on. Yeah. You got to rejoin, I guess. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. So. A lot of ladies. That are just entering the level up game. They have a lot of questions about their self-worth. And when you question your self-worth. Let me tell y'all something. 
When you question your self-worth, someone made you question it. Now you have to ask yourself, who is making you question your self-worth? That's number one. Because a lot of the questions that a lot of you ladies ask seems like the question was put in your head by another person. Because women don't walk around asking questions about their self-worth unless someone made them feel unworthy. So instead of asking the question about your self-worth, ask yourself, why did you listen to the person who tried to make you feel less worthy? And maybe not listen to them anymore, or maybe, you know, um, delete them out of your comments or social media or your life, you know? <laughs> Because a lot of the questions that are asked of me seem like someone, you know, really did a number on some of y'all's self-esteem. Okay. And that's the source of the issue. Oh, Melissa, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you for the donation. Help, I got caught in a lie about my car accident. What should I do? He hasn't called since I... You got to lie better. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Girl, if you have a lie, let me tell y'all. If you're going to lie... Your lie needs to make sense frontwards, backwards, side to side, and from every angle, okay? You should have gotten a picture of an old beat-up car that looks just like yours off the internet. You got to go in. You got to get creative, okay? <laughs> I don't know what you did, but when you lie about something major, you need to make the setup as real as possible. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Sorry. Next time, get pictures. You know, Google is your friend. You said you're not good at it. Well, you got to get, you have to, you have to get good at it before you lie about something major. Okay. You can't fix a lie, baby. <laughs> not, not a big lie. You can't fix a big lie. Because they don't trust you now. It's over. <laughs> I don't know how to fix that one you know you, I don't know how they caught you but you should have did your homework baby next time next time you got to go on Google and figure it out and get your pictures <laughs> um You got to believe it. What does knowing oneself mean? Is it who I am want to become in the version of ourselves we no longer want to be? Knowing yourself is knowing who you are at this moment, how you're going to react to situations and how you feel about yourself and the standards that you have. You know, and of course, who you plan to become. Yes, all of those things. So if you know that you can't stand certain things, don't hang around or be around certain things because if you react to them, they could cost you something or you're not able to, you know, take those words back or you know, if you know you can't lie very well and you're forgetful, you don't lie about something major, <laughs> you know, unless you can really cover your tracks. So know yourself, know what you're capable of, know what you're good at, know what you're talented at, and use those things to help you benefit. Okay. <laughs> How to get your standards in the first dates. A lot of y'all are trying to rush too quick. You're trying to rush too quick. Like y'all are trying to get stuff on the first date. Um, unless that man look like Quasimodo, you ain't getting nothing on the first date, baby. Um, he might bring you some roses or some flowers or some perfume if you've talked and chatted on the phone a, you know, a while before that. But you can't just come out straight asking for money on the first date, unless, of course, you're an escort or something like that. But I do not recommend trying to rush in that quick. That, to me, feels a little um, fast, okay? 
Now, if you're talking to this person uh, on the phone or texting, you can hint and leave clues that you that you want something or need something and see if they bring it. But if they're not paying that much attention and they're not feeling you on that level, you're probably not going to get it. Okay. So I don't know what the big rush is. If they start mentioning things and you want them to know your standards, all you have to say is your standards. Like if, if someone says, oh, this one girl or, you know, would you like to do this, 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 this and that? Well, I normally don't do that because I really believe this or I feel that. And you can lay down one of your standards. You know, I really don't go places, you know, on vacation during the year if it's, you know, if it's not something that's gifted to me. I'm saving for something. So they already know you ain't finna pay to go fly. You're not finna pay for nothing. I normally don't go out to eat that often uh, at expensive restaurants unless I'm invited. That means I ain't never finna pay. <laughs> um, I normally don't date men who aren't able to uh, totally provide for me. Or I've never dated a man that wasn't able to totally provide for me. That means you pay these bills. You don't have to say that on the first date, but it needs to come out eventually through the you know first part of the dating process. Okay. Even if you don't want a relationship, as long as they think you do, it's okay. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people, when y'all when y'all say y'all don't want something, you don't have to have it. You just have to say you want it. You just have to say what they want to hear and then go do whatever you want to do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't have to always do what you say. You can say and then do whatever you want. Why? Because they do. <laughs> they do the same thing. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So know who you are. And only believe that you are what you want to be. Don't let other people tell you are who you are. Don't let no Dusty tell you who you are. Don't let no um, MGTOW Rusty Dusty tell you who you are. Because they don't even know who they are. Okay? <laughs> so how can they tell you who you are and what you are going to end up as? Are they psychic? If they were psychic, they'd be getting paid. Okay? So they don't know. Um, when you listen to men that tell you, oh, you hit the wall or you, you're hit the wall and da, 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 da. they got posters up of women all over the uh, room or pictures all in their phone or following women on Instagram who are at the age or over the age who didn't hit the wall. So they didn't hit the wall. Those men's wallets hit the wall because they can't afford them. Right. And we say this all the time. So don't listen to men who say any of that. Any, any, anyway, women don't want young broke men. We don't value you for your looks. We value you for what you're able to provide. Okay, so we don't care. <laughs> um, and a lot of guys get upset about this. But if you really, like I keep telling you, if y'all really think about it, if you couldn't offer us money, you couldn't offer us much. Because we wouldn't want to deal with you for free. Okay? <laughs> Just saying. Okay. So I know what I am. I know who I am. And so I walk, talk, and act like that. And anybody that tries to tell me different, are, they are dismissed. Because I already know who I am. You know, And... I think a lot of women need to get to this level of unbotheredness and self-assurance because the amount of comments that, you know, I see come across as, you know, questioning your own self-esteem, it had to come from being told that you're less than. And whoever's telling you that, you, you know, you need to stop listening to them, okay? Okay. Oh, Skyla, sprinkle, sprinkle, a Sula four. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Those emojis are so cute. Thank you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So you got to make sure. Thank you for the donation. I appreciate it. You have to make sure you stop listening to people that 
are not beneficial to you, if they're not telling you how to get some money, if they're not giving you no money, if they're not boosting your self-esteem, then close your ears. <laughs> Click off. Turn the channel. Okay. There you go. You said not that she is less, but he is more. Well, then he need to pay more. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If he more, then pay more. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yeah, that's all I got to say. If you all of that, then pay. If you all of that, pay them bills. Prove it. You can't tell me. You got to show me with your money. <laughs> right? You can't be a broke king. There you go. Unless you a king. Yeah, you can be a broke king. But you can't be a broke king. Okay. Um. You just let anyone jump in. What? You can't let anybody? Okay, good for you. Broke Kang. Exactly. So, I mean, men will brag all day about how great they are, but they can't they can't prove it. <laughs> like talk is cheap, baby. And you know, we don't care. We don't listen if you ain't spending, okay? How to get over fantasy relationship. Um, I don't think you have to get over a fantasy relationship. If it's a fantasy, keep it. You know, Sometimes you might feel like it's okay. If it's all a fantasy, what's the harm in it? If, in, if you can get a real relationship and have a fantasy relationship and have another relationship, I mean, no discrimination here. If now, if you don't have a if you have a fantasy relationship and it's affecting you, um, then of course try to find a way to get a real relationship if that's what you want. Okay. Is your advice nard towards bachelorettes, child free, or can a woman with children? Y'all keep asking me this dumb question, and I am so sorry to have picked you out of the crowd, um, but. Do you know how many women have children that snag millionaires, six-figure men all the time? This information is for all women, even old women, women with gray hair, women with wrinkles, women with real booties, women with kids, women with one boob bigger than the other, <laughs> women with short hair, long hair, wigs, weave, whatever. This video is for all women, all women. Just because you have children does not mean you can't catch a man. And this is another thing. Some A lot of ladies have been told just because you, back in the old days, girl, the women with all them kids used to have men left and right. You know, they didn't let that stop them. That's all in here. <laughs> Okay, so no, that should not even matter. You're you're dating a man and a man is dating you. Your kids have nothing to do with it unless he want to take it to stepdaddy level. Then he might get to meet him. But other than that, they don't need to know the, all your business. They're trying to date you. They're not dating your family or your children. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Okay. And a lot of times people are like, you know, should I expect less because I have this and have that? No, you should expect more if you're a mother. You need to expect more. Your standards need to be even higher. Okay? Because now that man has to take care of you and some kids. So he need to have more money. Do you get it? <laughs> so my advice is for all women. Whatever age and number of kids... And I hope that y'all realize that you're not, you know, you're not uh, discarded because you have kids. Because every woman that I know that ha has kids have always pulled a man with money because they had to. Why would you date men with no money and you have kids? That's like going backwards in life. So it should be more of a motiva motivation to get more money if you got kids. 
you know, that's that's the old days. Old school women know this. You don't mess with broke Dusty if you got kids. Okay. There you go. How does a woman with kids pull a bollard? Okay, well, first, you don't go out to the club with your kids. You don't go to the bar with your kids. You don't put your kids in the background of your dating app picture if you're on a dating app. You don't show no pictures of your kids on your phone while you out on a date. You don't call your kids in, in, uh, on speakerphone while you out trying to freestyle. And you don't tell people and lead with, you know, oh, my kids this and my kids that. Because they're there to see you. They're there to hear what you are about. They're there to talk to you as an individual person. You know what I'm saying? So you leave those kids off the table when it comes to dating. And you don't even have to tell people you have kids if you don't even think you're going to get to date two or three with them. Okay. They don't matter. You know, the knowledge about your kids don't matter if you're not, if they're not even going to make it to date three. So, uh, so many women feel like they have to be an open book with photos on the first date and their whole life story spilled out. That is a no, a big no. So don't ever do that. They shouldn't find out you have kids until they've gotten you some gifts, a holiday them past or something. <laughs> when do you tell them you have kids? When you feel like they're going to be a major part of your future. Okay. Someone says you'll attract a predator. Exactly. Like you don't tell them you have kids unless they're trying to pay for their school clothes. You know, <laughs> no, you don't tell them you have kids. Kids are not their business. They're dating you, not your kids. If they start to like you a lot and they do find out you have kids, it's too late. They are already in love. Okay. If they don't, and they may not even care that you have kids at a certain point. And if they ask why you didn't tell them, say, you know, there's some crazy people out there and I don't want you targeting me for, just because I got some kids. And that's your, you know, that's how you get off the hook. Okay. So don't, don't even bother telling people you have kids. If Even if they ask you, you can just say, well, I always wanted kids. That means you always wanted the kids you got and they don't have to know you got them not really lying it's like I always wanted kids there you go and just because you always wanted them don't mean you ain't got already got them right <laughs> so you tell people who you are they don't tell you your value they don't tell you your worth you tell them that's it. Um, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, so, you know, when, when you get around people that start to try to judge you right in front of you and, and speak to you and tell you what you are and what you're not and this, 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 this and that, remember one thing, that's just their opinion. <laughs> And you can let them speak. You can let them waste their breath. You can do all of that and continue to be yourself as you choose to be. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. If y'all get a journal, y'all will not be telling y'all business. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Why red sprinkle sprinkle? Yeah, I I have um, pen pal slash journaling. You know, mystery boxes available on the Level Up Cosmetics and Stationery store. So you guys can write down all your feelings, express yourself, write your friends, write your sugar daddy, <laughs> uh, write whoever want to be written to, or you can write yourself a letter. It doesn't even matter. But uh, definitely they are available and they are, they're a limited amount. So um, they're not going to be around very long. So if you get yours, you get them. There's two 
um, choices. You just click the little arrow thing and you can get the coquette box or the vintage classic box, which is like more classic, like uh, vintage style stationery. And then the coquette is more of like the girly, feminine, more modern, you know, a little mix of um, more feminine, cutesy, girly stationery. Okay, so there's the link. Y'all go get it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And also look around in that whole store. I have makeup. I have stationery. I have journals. And if y'all like the lipstick I'm wearing, it's like a brown liner with... Um, my nudish brown lipstick and a little gloss over it. And this one is called Still Unbothered. Still Unbothered. And it comes in this really nice tube. This is this are, are pretty nude. Then I have another one that's very similar in color, but just slightly lighter called Sugar Daddy. And Yes, they're both nudes. So I'm still unbothered and sugar daddy. So y'all go get those. I also have lots of different colors as well. Yeah, you gotta get them. <laughs> um, and those that's also at that link. Just click on like just type in lipsticks when you get to that website. Your ex broke your heart. How how can you know if you meet a new guy if he's really in love with you when you are both in the beginning of the relationship. If he's paying him bills, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> that's the best way to find out. If you start paying for, for everything, that's how you know. I'm not I'm not dependent on nothing else. If you ain't paying, you don't lose. I'm sorry. I, I can't take your word for it no more. You got to prove it. That's how. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Like, if... if if you want to prove your love to me, whip out that wallet. Because that's the only way you're going to do it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. <laughs> What's love got to do with it? Exactly. And y'all, the funny thing is, like, so many women feel this way and they don't know it. They don't know it. That's why so many women, I'm afraid to get my heart broken. I'm afraid to date again. I'm afraid this. I'm afraid that. Well, then um, change um, the narrative, you know, exactly. Change the narrative. Like, you know, if this guy really loves me, then he's going to pay and he's going to gift me. And he's going to give me money. Why? Because that's how I um, expect to be shown love. <laughs> so those are the standards if you can't show me the way that I need to be shown then you don't love me period you know if someone asks you what your definition of love is you create your own definition of love that's literally my definition of love is being provided for protected um, you know, maybe there are some type of connection chemically and, you know, conversation wise and all that kind of stuff. But the major part is you need to care for me in every way. So I can't, I don't know. I can't accept that someone um, loves me unless they're giving me money. It's, I mean, like a man, you know, romantic type love. Okay. Regular unconditional love for like family members and children, that's a whole different story. But I'm talking about like love between like man and woman or in a relationship or whoever, you know, romantic love. <laughs> you said it sounds beautiful. Thank you. Your daddy used to say, if you ain't draining his pockets, the man is going to drain you. <laughs> okay. Men spend their money on what they love. Exactly. So, you know, what do you say when a man asks my age, but I don't want to tell them? Ask them to guess. They hate it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Then tell them they write if they guess low. 
<laughs> if, if you hate being asked your age, then ask them to guess. They're going to be afraid to say the wrong number and they're going to put it super low and you just agree. Okay. If they say super high, you need to go back to the mirror and finish doing what you got to do. Okay. All right. They say 10, 10 years older than what you are. You better go try again, girl. Your ex was stingy to you. Oh, he came out of those pockets for his lady. Okay. Well, I don't know. You, you got to make them spend. Okay. But what if he sees your ID? Don't show him your ID. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Keep it private. If he sees your ID, then you got to say, well, I just didn't want you to feel like you guessed wrong. <laughs> All right. Why does your ex keep finding you? How does he? How is he looking for you, girl? Is he finding you? Is he trying to give you find you to get you some money? <laughs> okay. One time you made a guy guess his age, like me, four years. What? What about when they claim you didn't invest enough into the relationship? You're not supposed to invest enough in the relationship. You're not supposed to invest in the relationship. You're the woman. The man is supposed to invest into the relationship. And he needs to keep you interested enough to keep coming back, you know? You didn't give, they didn't give you a reason to invest in the relationship. They weren't doing all the things you like. They weren't trying to take you to the nice places that you like to go. They, they weren't paying attention to all the things that you like. They weren't paying attention for you to invest into the relationship. You aren't giving them enough money to invest into the relationship. Obviously, you know, because a, a woman will invest in a relationship that she wants to keep. <laughs> How do you hurt a man's ego in the most hurtful way? Call him the wrong name. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> um... Um, anyway, <sighs> call him the wrong name is just childish. No, not it. You know, I mean, it is a little bit childish, but she asked me what would mess up a man's ego. <laughs> so, I mean, that pretty much will do it. You've done that on accident. <laughs> and what happened? Okay. That's right. He was like, "What? You hurt? You hurt him? Hurt him? Pocket? Hurt his pockets?" Okay, so you know, if you are in a relationship and a man is trying to tell you who and what you are, even if that's what they feel in their heart, if that's not what you feel you are, then you don't have to listen or believe it either. You like you just wasting your breath, sir. You're just wasting your air because I am who I said I was and I'm always going to be that, period. <laughs> um, so people could get, people can get like, you know, adamant about trying to tell you who you are, but it doesn't matter. As long as you know, that's all that matters. A man shouldn't be judging a woman. <laughs> nope. Can you give me advice for Valentine's Month at college? Guys here are wild. Y'all are so cute. Y'all youngsters. Uh, like, I never dated young like guys my own age. I was always trying to date somebody with some money, some real money. So I didn't, like, at the, at the age y'all are in college, I was dating men with money. They weren't in college. They were grown. So I don't know, baby. <clears throat> I was not interested in school boys. I was too you know, too focused. <laughs> I say like date for fun while you're in college. 
Or if you about the money, then focus on dating men already graduated and getting their money. <laughs> you must be mad, mad at broke dusties. Broke dusties should be mad, mad at themselves. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't got to be mad at them. Sure. When I talk to a man, my mind go blank. I don't know what happened to me. Then you need to rehearse, practice, write down what you're going to say. And when you get on the date, pause and think of those lines that you wrote. You need to prepare yourself. And it will start coming out naturally the longer, you, the more you do that. So get you a little journal. Get you a little, go, go get you one of my mystery boxes or one of my She Was 7 journals on the website. Level up stationary here you go you start your journal on what you need to say to these guys okay and practice it and when you get out you won't freeze up mm -hmm. it just takes a little effort and practice thank you if a woman would call me by wrong name i would immediately begin to answer it and exit door <laughs> sprinkle sprinkle i think that's what they want you to do that's why they calling you the wrong name <laughs> um you didn't want to do that because you felt like it would come up as fake and not genuine oh i don't know what y'all talking about but how to renew a relationship we started of as Friends with benefit or girl, uh-uh. You're trying to build stronger foundation now. Okay. He was on rebound. Um, first of all, who wants to renew the relationship? Is it you or is it him? Because if it's you, it's you're you're overstepping the boundaries of friends with benefits. Um, if the man is the foundation. The man is the foundation of the relationship. He chases. You don't. If he don't want a stronger foundation or relationship with you, you can't have it. You know what I'm saying? He has to be the chaser. And when I say he has to be the chaser, I mean, if you want something that he just wanted a rebound and now you want a, a, a man, then it's not going to even work out because he didn't take you seriously. And that always happens a lot. Some, yeah, sometimes women don't realize that they can't be friends with benefits. It's not in your nature. Okay. Eventually, you're going to want more. So if you're going to have a friend with benefits, make sure they want you more. Period. Okay. From start. You need to want, you need to be the one that sets up the friends with benefits situation. It needs to be all you, not him. It's not his idea. It's yours. That way, you know, he wants you more. <laughs> and eventually, if you decide that you want him, then you can have him. How to establish expectations in a relationship that you are revisiting again. Um, I wouldn't. Re <clears throat> I really wouldn't revisit a relationship unless those expectations were already met before I came back. <laughs> because your expectations have been there for for the entire relationship that you are trying to revisit, and they should know by now. You know, so. They should already be met before you even think about revisiting anything. Is, are my standards met? Then I'm not revisiting that thing. <laughs> yeah, you're not doing the friends with benefits anymore. You was just trying to get over an accident. Why do y'all? Here's the thing. Like it, men don't do this with women. They just move on. Why is it so hard? <laughs> How can I get some money out of your friend with benefits? He's obsessed. 
Tell him you need some before he gets some. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Tell him you need some money before he gets some honey. There you go. Why do average guys always say we're delusional for wanting a rich man? Because in their minds, they feel as if they're in this world where they're single, they're young, and they feel like they can, you know, date the type of woman that, you know, they find attractive. And they don't realize that the type of women that they find attractive want men with money, more money than they have. And so they call women delusional until they see them walking next to a man driving, you know, a very nice car um, that look like they got a lot of money. Then they're not so delusional. Then they're a gold digger. So it goes from being delusional. Then it goes to being a gold digger. So your names will change throughout, you know, your levels. So before you get it, you're delusional. When you get it, you're a gold digger. And so the delusion is no more. <laughs> right? So I will, I really wouldn't. Delusional is the first step to being a gold digger. You have to have a delusion that you deserve it all or whatever it is you want. And through that delusion, you're going to take steps to get it. Okay. Maybe they should be delusional about, maybe men should start being delusional about being a millionaire or getting some money or increasing their income streams. They should be really delusional about that. And maybe they'll start to do it because I don't see women backing down, backing out of being delusional to get some money, baby. Oh, Goddess Walry, can you please ask the audience to put a heart in the chat room if they are under 30? If over 30, get all your books, join the highest tier. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Girl, I ain't doing all of that, but thank you for the donation. We don't need to know who's over 30 and under 30. That's their business. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> okay. So I'm not going to ID people up in here. It might be somebody that's sitting over here underage. <laughs> no, a lady never tells her age. Unless they don't care about what you think. Okay. You said no, 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 no. We don't we don't disclose that info. Sprinkle, sprinkle. How many, how many ladies in here? Are going to be 21 for many, many years or 29 <laughs> for many, many years. There you go. That's that's the question you ask. <laughs> How to deal with jealous women around an attractive guy. I don't see them. All I see is me and him. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to something that I'm not worried about. You know what I'm saying? There is no competition. There's only me and that dude. And once he re and once he starts paying attention to something else, I'm out. Okay. Twenty-eight for life. Yes. I don't compete. Either I'm either I'm the center of attention to you, or I'm the center of attention to somebody else. Which one you going Which one you gotta be? How you doing? <laughs> so. Lots of underage questions. Well, there are a lot of college students in here, of course. Okay, so, yeah. Can you tell a rich guy a lady never tells her age? Yes, you can. Um, My sister, two years older than me, you both have level up journey, but She's pregnant now and upset. She can still live. A little. Yeah. Girl, I look I look good throughout my entire pregnancy. I don't know what y'all are talking about. Mm -hmm. now, I was probably looking better than I look sometimes while I was pregnant because I did extra so I could feel pretty and look good at all times. I was like, especially with my first pregnancy, I had on these cute dresses. I still wore heels sometimes or, you know, <laughs> had my hair and nails done, full face of makeup, shopping for little cute baby outfits, 
skin glowing, girl. I'll stay level up. What you talking about? The only only way that you can't level up is if you don't have the time, the tools, or the energy to level up. Okay. Being pregnant, you should have more time. If you feel like, okay, uh, here's the thing. Don't let yourself go even in pregnancy, okay? Don't let yourself go even in pregnancy. Look good still every day. <laughs> sure, how often do you wash your makeup brushes? I just get some new makeup brushes or... I have like this little thing that you just like rub it on top of to get the excess off. But um, why do you have a problem with your makeup brushes? Do you need to wash them? Do you get acne or something? I would say um, wash them as much as you need to. You said daily. <laughs> How do you stop comparing yourself with other women? Why do y'all ask the same stuff every day? I'm just curious. Are y'all a robot? <laughs> okay. How do you stop asking the same question every day? Let me tell you. You pick a different question. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. She don't want her body messed up. Then she better get some coconut oil or some cocoa butter and slather it on every day. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You better look like she baking in Crisco. Slather it up, baby. Okay. How to stay motivated and cute even though it's cold outside. I stay motivated and cute no matter what the temperature is. So I don't know. Do what you do. Have a wardrobe that expands from hot to cold, you know. Y'all asking quite the same. You inside your house. You're not trying to put on makeup in the snow. The wind ain't blowing while you're trying to do your hair. You inside. So get dressed inside at room temperature. And then when you step outside, you look good still. Okay. <laughs> it's like some of these questions. You got level up lipstick and I love it so much. I need to get more level up cosmetics. Thank you, Moonlight Goddess. Yes. Get y'all level up lipsticks, ladies. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Hey, let me link y'all directly to all my lipsticks. That way you can choose from the plethora of colors. Yes. Hold on. Where's your lipsticks? Okay, I'm just going to link y'all to, here we go, lipstick. And whatever y'all are looking for on the website, just type it into the search bar on the website and it shall come up. So I have lots of things on there. All right, there you go. The lip lipsticks. There you go. Are there any questions to ask a guy in the first date. No, you're not on an interview. Just ask how his day was and let him explain and you listen to see exactly what he does in his day. If he calls shots or not, if he's a boss or a worker, you need to just ask him about his day and let him just keep talking. Okay. Take notes in your mind. You get a lot of information if you ask someone how their day was and what did they do? And it doesn't seem like an interview. Uh huh. Click the link at the top of the chat. It's in, highlighted in blue. And those are the level up books. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you. There's several to choose from. 
or you can get them all and I would appreciate if you did. Um, what do you say about yourself while being on a date? All the things that you represent as far as, you know, um, who, like, honestly, you don't really say anything about yourself. The date is entertaining. The date is supposed to be fun, entertaining. If you're sitting there on an interview, that's not a date. That's an interview. You know, all the questions that you're talking about and, and saying on a date should have been talked about and asked through texting and on the phone prior. The date is to have fun. The date is to get to know the personality of the other person. So if you don't have a personality, then uh, it's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be easy. So just let your natural personality come through. Let them entertain you. You are there to be impressed by them, especially if they asked you out. They asked you out because they like you. They want to impress you. And so allow them to do that. You don't have to do all the work. You don't have to try extra hard. You already look good. That's why they asked you out. You seem interesting. And so just, you know, let your personality shine through and allow them to impress you. That's pretty much it. You don't have to impress them. It's not a competition. You already look good. They already asked you out. They obviously like you. So allow them to do the impressing. Okay. <laughs> if they start asking a bunch of questions, change the subject and ask them questions back instead. Or, you know, change the subject entirely. You think you're going to do an experiment and go on a date with no makeup? What do y'all think? <laughs> Only if they broke, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Only if they ask you to coffee, show up looking like you need some coffee. How you doing? Actually, don't even show up. But if you show up as a joke, show up like you need some coffee, looking like a zombie. <laughs> I'm so glad you invited me for coffee. I need some. Can't get... You know, um, I think it was on this channel. Someone commented, like, I think it was a couple years ago. This guy invited this lady on a... a coffee date and she she doesn't do coffee dates and she told him I don't really like coffee dates and so when she arrived to the coffee date she was all dressed up like she was going on like a real date like really pretty dress and heels and whatnot and she got her coffee after he paid and then she said thanks for the coffee and then her real date came to pick her up and they went out so <laughs> I said, that was funny and cruel, and I loved it. <laughs> Do it again. So. What are your views on inviting a sugar daddy to your house? I really don't want him in my space. Then don't invite him. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's my views. If you don't want him there, don't invite him there. What's a good conversation and question to ask on a date? Um, how was your day? What did you do today? That's a great question. Okay. How to improve your sex appeal? How do I become more sexy than cute? Um, dress the part. Talk the part. Be mysterious. <laughs> find someone that you think emulates sex appeal and maybe learn how to, you know, emulate their style, how they talk, walk, and dress. Find like maybe an actress or, you know, an entertainer and this, that you think has lots of sex appeal and go for it and copy <laughs> there you go. How to address a man when he thinks one date means you're going to spend all of your time with him. Um, one date does not mean you're going to spend all of your time with anyone. When the date's over, the date's over. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
Until the next date. So that's why it's called dating, because you go out on more than one. <laughs> okay. Be busy and tell him, you know, let's go out again sometime. How many dates should you go on? As many as you want. Like, if you're actively dating, you should always be doing something. If you're always at home and like if it's if it's bad weather and stuff and you just want to see each other, you know, um, and you've been dating for a while and y'all are basically, you know, together, that's a different story. But just because you date two times don't mean you automatically in a relationship, you know, unless he's automatically paying them bills and then bills on automatic pay, you know, don't rush into that. Like guys think if they, you know, um, take you on a few dates, you're theirs. No. Here's a few bills and you might be considered, okay? <laughs> he said he wanted a second date in the same week. Oh. Okay. All of them are, all of them with multiple men don't put all your eggs in one basket. Exactly. Well, I mean, like if you went out on a date Monday and he asks you out Friday, I think that's okay. But if it's very close together, it's kind of desperate. So what if mother-in-law compares with her daughters constantly? I don't care about no mother-in-law. <laughs> Y'all have to understand I am so unbothered about what people think. I would be like, yeah, that sounds nice. I would pretend like I didn't even hear her. I'm like, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, you know how when, when people aren't really listening to you and they're just agreeing to whatever you say? That's exactly what I would be doing because I wouldn't care. <laughs> I'm not there to impress. You. The people are here to impress me. I'm not there to impress them, period, no matter who it is. And that's that main character energy that I keep telling y'all about. Get it. <laughs> okay, mother-in-law, whatever you say. I could care less. You know, it's like, good for you. How to get main character energy? Um, act it. Don't care. Stay unbothered. Like, I don't care. People were like, you know what? How do I keep, how, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? Just don't care about it. That's the easiest way. I'm trying to help y'all. No one told you you had to care. No one put a gun to your head and said you have to care. No one said you're getting paid to care. No one said if you care, you're going to get something good in return. Nobody said it. If you care about something that bothers you, stop caring about it. And then it won't bother you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the secret. Okay. How to keep his attention when you only look good wearing hair down and wearing it down all the time. I don't know what this means. Girl, if you look good, you're going to keep his attention. Period. Okay. Who cares when they have it? It's not money for me. No me. Huh? Who cares what they have? It's not money for me. Mean. Well, I don't know what that means. No, I blah, whatever. <laughs> money is important. Okay. Um. Even if I already have money, it's still important. Sheila, what is your opinion on men who have podcasts? I don't know any. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, I like Neil deGrasse Tyson and his podcast with a uh, Chuck. Star Talk. That's a good one. I think he's very smart, intelligent. You know, 
has some witty comedy, you know, for old men. But yeah, I like Neil deGrasse Tyson podcast, Star Talk. Yes, I do. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And a business associate is taking you apartment shopping tomorrow. Good for you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> How do you get a guy to commit? Start dating other men or tell him, I need to know what we're going to do because I need to know exactly uh, how to plan the next year of my life. <laughs> I mean, if you don't like, you can't make a man commit. They should want to commit to you, but you should, you should always have options so that they know that, you know, you're the one that needs to be asked to be committed. Like you should never ask a man to commit. They should ask you. Okay. Don't chase no man. Don't chase no man. You know, if you've been together for a long time and you're expecting marriage, then you can give them the ultimatum. And if they don't take it, then, you know, adios. But don't chase no man. <laughs> um, You have the mindset, but the guy you met here in the Midwest lives in Texas. You're moving soon. Okay. Good for you. You have this issue in, in why they don't chase. I don't get approached by men. Maybe it's because it's more liberal. But yeah, the men here are also feminine. Okay. And then go out on the outskirts. Maybe go to a little country town. Find you a little hallmark town. Go out of town. You know, I would. I don't know how y'all even bother dating in those giant cities with like all that, you know, pressure and stuff. I, I'm going to the country. I'm going to find, find me somebody with some Hallmark vibes and stuff. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> sure. Do you ever make up situations to create the feeling of what you want to feel? Um, I just feel it. I don't have to make up situations. I just feel what I want. You know. Uh oh, Miss Tippy Wong, sprinkle, sprinkle. What do you think about doing things in a timely fashion? I'm usually late for homework assignments and documents related things. How can I overcome this? Do it on your own time, unless, like, honestly, I don't like schedules. I don't like doing stuff on time. That's why I don't work for people. I feel like schedule it way ahead of time so that when you do procrastinate and actually hand it in, it's actually on time. <laughs> You know, like if you got homework due Friday, finish it all on Tuesday and start planning to do it the week before. Because I'm, you know, I don't like the schedule. Um, it's like, you're not going to tell me what I'll do. I'll do what I want. <laughs> uh, you can, you know, plan ahead. That's all I can tell you. Plan ahead so you have time to procrastinate. There you go. Thank you for the donation. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You hate schedules too. Me too, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, you said you're in Bermuda, Bermuda, Maribel? Hey. If money is so important, child, why do you look so broke to me? So you can, so you can send me some more money. I mean, that's how people get paid, right? By looking like they ain't got it. So you're not going to show up on a date with a sugar daddy with all the designers in the world. You're going to show up there looking like you need something. Sprinkle. There you go. There go my cash app. Send me some money so, so I don't have to look broke no more for you. <laughs> okay. I'll come gucci up next time so I can look ratchet and labeled. Since that's what you think look expensive. Let me get it in, girl. I'm going to buy fake Gucci, too. You ain't going to know the difference. I'm going to keep the rest of that money. Okay. You said that was hateful. I know. I mean, obviously, she's projecting her own issues. And we're we're not going to judge her for that. Just send me some money, girl. Spark, spark. All right. She has a spin for everything. <laughs> 
do you think going to school is worth it in these times? I'm thinking about going back to school. Um, I'd rather use the money to open a small business or online business. Okay, I'm like, uh, I'm not. <laughs> all right. Do you live in NYC? It all depends where you're going. Okay. Well, if y'all live in NYC and y'all know where to hang out and where men are paying for stuff, let, let the other ladies know. You can buy quality products with no logo. Yes, you can. <laughs> you want to be art therapist? Oh, that's nice. You can be an art therapist and just tell people you are. I don't know. Like, do you really need a degree to say you're an art therapist? Um, anyone in London who knows where rich man at? Y'all help Sierra. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. You're... Y'all know the trolls always come in. They have nothing else better to do. But I'm just glad they clicked on the video, commented, and, you know, that's more than enough for me. Okay. Did she just make up a job? Girl, I don't know. A lot of the jobs these days don't even sound like you need degrees. Stop reading my comment. I'm talking to someone in these comments far from broke and no projection here. Girl, the great goddess. That's why I didn't get on you too hard. <laughs> that, that, I have made mistakes prior reading a comment for someone else. That's why, you know, you talking trash to somebody else. Okay, but I, <laughs> you got to say their name, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Then I think you're talking to me. She paid you. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. See, I, I didn't try to get too mad. I just let it go a little bit. If you was a dusty, though, if you was a guy, you would have probably gotten it a little harder. All right. <laughs> what kind of jobs do you suggest to save up to start a business? You see, this is the thing. You have to know this for yourself. Like, what are you passionate about? What do you like? What would you do for free if you could do that but figure out how to get paid that's the that's the best thing i can tell you what would, what would you do for free now figure out how to make yourself get paid by doing it that's the job you want create it okay and with all my links up at the top of the books that are for level up i also have a book in there called how to do what you love and it helps you to come up with ideas to start small businesses that you're actually passionate about and that you love doing. Because you don't just ask, what should I do? You ask, what would I do for free? That way you can work a long time, work hard and get paid to do something you actually love. And your benefits will show faster than doing something that you have no passion for, you don't care about, you're not interested in. So find something you would absolutely do for free and figure out how to get paid and then turn it into a business. Okay. That's the best thing I can tell you. Or you can buy the book, how to do what you love. And it's linked at the top with all my other level up books. And all the ideas are in there. I'm telling you. What are your thoughts? Why y'all keep asking me about other people. I don't care about them other people. I don't know them other people. I never met them. They never paid me. They never bought me nothing. So I don't have no opinion on them. They don't exist to me. Okay. Did they ever send me a gift? Did they send me a cash out? Did they send me some money? Then I don't know. I don't feel any type of weight about them. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> I don't know these people. Like, like literally. Why would I talk about someone I have never met? Why would I give you an opinion of someone that I don't, that I've never spoken to personally? Ask me about somebody I know. And then I probably still ain't going to talk because I'm not a, a person that's going to uh, sit there and gossip because I have more important things to talk about. 
Okay. What do I think about myself? All good things. Mm-hmm. Sprinkle, sprinkle. She would be in her own world. I, I literally be in my own world with all the people that I cherish, you know. And if you're not one of them, then I talk, I mostly talk to you, you know, through the comments and stuff. But if you're not in my personal world, I really don't have opinions. <laughs> Do I think loyal men exist? Loyalty has, you know, levels. Like loyal to who and for how long? <laughs> and through what circumstances? Because people do things and loyalty changes. So, you know, you can't just put the label on one particular, you know, group of people and put them through life's events and say, you're going to remain loyal no matter what happens. That's not reality. <laughs> you know, so if there are loyal men, I would say loyalty is based on circumstance. And it's also based on, you know, wherever you are in your life right there and how you feel. about the other person you're trying to be loyal to because you can't be loyal to someone if they're unloyal to you. You're going to stay loyal to someone unloyal. <laughs> there you go. So loyalty is relative, darling. Loyalty is relative. Um, okay. How can you still get your dream wedding? You married your sugar daddy too fast. He's 17 years older than you with bad health problems. I get mad about this. <laughs> Girl, you got to wait till this, your second marriage. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. <laughs> second marriage. Start planning your wedding for your second marriage. That's all I can tell you. You got bad health. It's only a matter of time. So get to, get to planning. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Make sure you own the wheel. There you go. <laughs> or maybe throw a party with a theme and make go all out. You know, throw, throw a party with an expensive theme and wear a nice dress, girl. Pretend like it's a lid. All right. The great goddess, sprinkle, sprinkle. Get you, get you, a, get you a party planner and, you know. Go all out. Thank you to great goddess Sprinkle Sprinkle. Can you do a video on your knowledge of astrology? No, Sprinkle Sprinkle. The video will be very short because all I do is read my own horoscope and then I barely believe it half the time. So that's all you're going to get. <laughs> Today's horoscope for Pisces is... This, this, and that. Oh my God, I don't believe that. I do what I want. You know, that's that's how it literally go. <laughs> the, the horoscope would be like half read through and not agreed upon most of the time. Okay. You said I'm above the horoscope. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I realized that like a lot of horoscopes will tell you something. But even you don't let horoscopes tell you nothing. You tell you tell yourself what you're going to do. Period. <laughs> oh, the horoscope says this, this, and that. Well, I say this, this, and that. Now, which, which one you think going to really happen? <laughs> there you go. If women are the creator of this world, how come some women struggle to manifest? Because they don't know. Sprinkle, sprinkle. They don't know who they are. <laughs> I can't be around people who let the Zodiac and horoscope rule their lives. Exactly. If you let some horoscopes rule your life, then you don't rule the horoscope. And that means you don't rule your life. And I'm about ruling my own life. So. 
you're supposed I'm supposed to read what I wrote for myself. That's what I feel like. Like uh, Jay, thank you for being a member, but I'm supposed to read what I wrote for my own future. <laughs> and if it's if it agrees with the Pisces horoscope before I read it, then so be it. But I'm writing my own narrative. That's the main character energy that I speak of. If you write your own story, your own narrative and what you want to happen and then go read your horoscope and it's similar, then great. But write yours first. Write your own horoscope. <laughs> Literally. And, and it might line up. It might line up. I'm not saying it won't. But write your own thing first and then go compare it. There you go. If you If it's the same, then great. So be it. Why do guys ask you what's your sign? It's so weird. Because they want to see if you're compatible. I'll just say dollar sign. <laughs> dollar sign. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> That's the sign. When you see that dollar sign in front of my cash app, that's my sign. Ah, and tell him to text you through cash app only if he got a question. <laughs> so. You say that all the time that your sign is dollar sign? And it, okay. <laughs> you was hoping to end up having a committed relationship with a guy at work, but the only guy that wanted to date me at work was a young nerd that was unattractive and probably broke. <laughs> Why are you dating dudes at work? <clears throat> if this is not the owner or the boss, then what you doing? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> you know, you, you got to get the benefits of dating at work. That means you date the boss or the owner. Otherwise, don't date at work. It's not a good idea. Have you, who here has used the elixirs? Uh, if you want to read the reviews on the Etsy, on the Etsy page for the, the elixirs, it's there. Or you can ask somebody in here. Uh oh, style queen, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, girl. Mary Sugar Daddy building with his wife a new home. How should I leverage this? Should I act upset or unbothered? He pays my rent. What's the best way to react? You don't react. He's yo, Sugar Daddy, not your boyfriend. Um, he is your sugar daddy, not your boyfriend. He's paying that rent. Let him pay that rent. How you react to it is you go out and date other guys and don't let him find out if you that bothered. Look, as long as the rent pay, maybe he could throw in some shopping. I don't know. But honestly, you're not there to get upset because you're only the sugar baby. You are not his fiance. You are not, you know... He, he already telling you he ain't going nowhere. Accept it and get your money. You can still date other men and maybe it will eventually turn into something and you can, you know, have a relationship and get married. But in the meantime, get that rent paid, baby. Save your own money and build something for yourself. You know, I really wouldn't care if that's your sugar daddy. He's building a house with another woman or I mean, his wife. Let him build that house with his wife, you know. As long as your rent is paid and you ain't got to go to work and you can go date other guys, sounds good to me. <laughs> keep keep your mind in, you know, on why you're there. There you go. Keep your mind on why you're there. Are you there for him to be faithful to you and uh, not, you know, be with his wife? Are you trying to steal him from his, from your, are you trying to steal him from the wife? It ain't working. 
<laughs> you gotta try harder until you got him. He gotta spend more money on you than he do the wife. The wife made a chess move. She got him to build a house. And so now his investment is with her more than it is with you. So if you want to steal him, you got to put, you know, you got to make him spend a lot of money. And she just trumps you with a house, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> you should have at least tried to get a car. Go to the dealership. <laughs> okay. How fast should a man you are speaking to online dating apps and you money? Um, if he offers it to you the same day, the same, uh, the couple of minutes. <laughs> if, you know, within the same conversation. If that's what, if that's what he's um, trying to tell you he wants to do. How long, uh, uh, Natalia, sprinkle, sprinkle, you need to steal a husband, girl. <laughs> um, well, good luck. It's possible, so good luck, sprinkle, sprinkle. You will never save any amount equals his potential earnings, no longer cheaper to keep her, but more profitable to stay put. <laughs> yeah, get your money, period. <laughs> Always get your money. What is a good question to ask a rich man to see if he's provider and okay with spending on me on the first date or over the phone? Um, there's not really a good question. You have to see him in action. Like if you're going out on a date, he has to be ready to spend. He has to make sure you have everything you want. He needs to he needs to say the words, let me know if you need anything. Or, you know, um, he needs to be eager to pay, eager to please, eager to impress, eager to uh, suggest, um, you know, future dates. Um, he needs to be eager to, like, if you, if you say something, like, oh my gosh, I lost my earrings or my favorite bottle of perfume broke. He needs to be e eager to say, oh, what kind was it? I'll go buy you some. That's the type of guy that will provide when they're eager to please and purchase. Okay, that's it. You shouldn't have to drag it out of them. They should be eager to do so. You lack provider energy? Yes. It should be natural. Yes. That's how you know they're a natural provider. If you got to drag it out of them, they're not naturally providers. Um, you'll know the, the ones that don't want to provide when you meet them. They'll be always complaining. It looks like it hurts when they pull their wallet out. It looks like it's painful when they pay and sign that credit card bill. They take a long time to look at it. <laughs> okay. That's how you know. Y'all ever seen that? I know y'all have. Especially if y'all are new. Because, you know, my subscribers always know when I go in about how it looks painful when some men take out their wallet to pay. It looks painful. Like they try to take it all, all slow. And they open it up and look at it like something going to appear that wasn't there before. And they like peek inside and like put it, the credit card down slowly. Close the little bill thing slowly. Push it over there. As if it's so hard to part with. And they take a deep breath and exhale as if it's hurt, hurting them and it's very painful. You can tell you can feel that broke energy coming through when a man gets a bill. How many of you can feel that? Now, the, the best feeling is when they don't even look at the bill and they just slap their credit card in the thing and say, There you go. <laughs> I 
Okay. Oh, the great God is sprinkle, sprinkle, girl. Thank you, girl. You you sprinkling me extra because you you ain't got to sprinkle me too much extra because I um like you thought I got on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. I'd be so happy like where we were going next. Exactly. Complaining about a bill is a turnoff. Yep. Don't, don't say nothing about that price. Just pay happily and move on. If you got to tell me about how expensive something was, it better be my wedding ring, okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> and I'm saying, yeah, you're right. Okay. Do you have any advice on staying consistent as a YouTuber? Did you have any troubles starting out? No, I just went on every day. <laughs> you know what? I'm here. You're going to say me. Period. I just went on every day. Every day. Or every other day. And I just kept going. That's all you got to do. Some people are successful overnight. Some people go viral really quick. Some people, the long and steady wins the race. You know, so. What like a lot of and a lot of people start YouTube's, um, you know, maybe for money and things like that. I started it to help women, so my intentions for starting YouTube was literally just to help women and share my knowledge. So you know, I I want to I want to be around on YouTube for a long time. And I am going to be around on YouTube for a long time. I've been here for ten years, and um, consistency is the key. There you go. It's like, it's really, it's really easy, I think, to be consistent if you uh, enjoy it. Mm hmm. And I started two channels around the same time within the same year of each other. So I grew both channels at once. <laughs> so uh, then I had a third channel, which is a beauty channel. And um, I attempted to do an ASMR channel, which is still there. So I have literally four channels, but I only really um, uh, do videos on two. <laughs> I might go back to the other ones, you know, every once in a while, but these are my two channels. Shira, thank you, K Tuki, sprinkle, sprinkle. Shira, I find it hard to get money from these guys, even the scenarios and being leveled up. What can I do to improve? You got to pick different guys. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You got to, okay, this may sound really, thank you for the donation, by the way. You have to pick a man that you, okay, if you're having trouble, find the one man in the crowd that you know is going to gift you or pay. Start there, okay? That you already know. You ain't going to have no problem with. That means they're not going to be very attractive. They're not going to be super young. But you know with the right story, they're going to give you something, put something on it at least. Start there. Start there. <laughs> um. Find someone that you know that you are totally out of their league. Like they they might think they'd have died and gone to heaven if they, you know, get to talk to you. Find someone like that. And they will definitely want to spend their money or help you when if you're in a damsel in distress situation. Okay. So you need to go find that type of man. I don't care like how awkward it is. That's what you need to find because that's what spins. Okay. That's what spins. They're not, they may not look like, you know, the perfect couple on your arm, you know, the perfect man on your arm, but they're going to, it's going to look perfect in your bank account. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Here's, here's some key traits to look for. Short. Older. Bald. Okay. Money to spend with no one to spend it on. 
Okay, there you go. That's what you need to look for. You say you fumbled a short, balding, divorced provider. Whoopsie. If you want a certain man, look at the woman he dates. Young women have confidence in yourself. Yes. You got to look better than him. Yes. So go for the obvious. Don't play guessing games. Sure, my sugar daddy real short. Oh, damn ball. Okay, see, Raya, tell, Raya will tell you. Raya love, tell them. <laughs> he said, and he's lonely all. Well, if I get an attractive older man who's generous, well, good luck and, like, congratulations if you do. But a lot of women just, honestly, they're just trying to find someone who's going to pay them bills, to provide, to give them shopping money. They're not worried about finding the perfect match or whatever. They're trying to find the perfect money. Okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. So depending on what you're looking for at this time, adjust the target, you know. I mean, if you're dating the short, balding old guy, um, and y'all aren't exclusive, then you can still be looking for your older, handsome guy. I mean, it, it doesn't mean you can't do both. But at the same time, I'm just saying, do both if you don't know which one. <laughs> you said, do I think it's realistic? Uh, I think it's realistic to um, have options. <laughs> yes, I think it's realistic to have options. Uh, I think it's possible, but I don't know if it's going to be something more, you know, permanent or temporary. So um, I'm doing what's most beneficial. So that's that's how I look at it. Uh oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. What time is it, y'all? Okay, it's still a little early here. Motivation on getting a dress. And out the house, I just go to the gym, then go somewhere else. Like, if there's a dressing room in your gym, take some clothing and change out of it and then go somewhere else after the gym. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, yes. You love, love, love short, old, ugly, wealthy men. Even every beauty needs a beast. Okay, God is wild red. <laughs> Please share. I need your advice. I live in Paris. All the men are broke here. Do you think I need to move to the U.S. or somewhere else? Maybe. Thank you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, maybe try to find men that aren't from Paris and that are maybe just visiting or you know temporarily living there to date. Because if you can find some Americans that maybe work there, maybe you can get some 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 of their money. <laughs> uh, find out where all the Americans hang out. Go to the touristy spots. <laughs> find like you know where maybe people that are um, state you know uh, what do you call it? People that are transferred or like working in Paris from the U.S. or wherever they be spending money at. Find some foreign people in your country. You're going to your company's holiday party. How should you dress and act? What holiday is coming up, girl? Because I thought all of them done passed. <laughs> what y'all celebrating? MLK Day, girl, what? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all having a party for Martin Luther King Jr., girl? Valentine's Day. Okay, I would just wear a holiday-appropriate colors, maybe a nice dress. 
I don't know what holiday y'all are separating. I mean, separating, celebrating, but definitely wear a nice, you know, nice dress. Look good. You said late holiday party. Girl, it's too late. That's how late it is. It's too late. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't even be in the mood no more. I'm done. You might as well dress up for Halloween because that's how late they are. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. Shira, thoughts on being too good to be in a certain place with some people. Why are you still there? That's my thoughts. <laughs> if you're too good to be there, then why are you there? You know? <laughs> if you work there, then... Then why are you okay? So obviously you're not too good if you work there, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Otherwise, you'd be working elsewhere. Okay. <laughs> like if you're too good to be there, then go find you a better position. Yes. What you have a dream that there would be more dusties and masculinas or pygmies, bonnetas or ratchets, <laughs> takis. In 2023, oh my gosh. Y'all never know the ratchet, the ratchet character may may come back out around Valentine's Day so she can get her, get some some Valentine's Day gifts. <laughs> okay. Uh, she might make an appearance, maybe, you know, but maybe not. We'll see. You think it's a good idea to do beard care service? Um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's, are you trying to meet men by, you know, um, caring for their beards? If it's in a rich area only. How do you stay motivated with small children, toddlers? Any advice? Um, honestly, I feel like when I when I, my kids were toddlers, I still got up and got dressed and looked good. I'm sorry, <laughs> I still never left my house looking crazy. Um, it's just something that I was used to doing, and I always did, and it became a habit. So make a habit out of getting up and doing whatever it is that you need to do and you know um you know when they're like keep them busy so you can get ready or dress dress yourself and do your makeup keep them busy so you have that time do it while they're taking naps or something like that do it wake up before they get up you got to put in like a little bit of extra work in order to stay leveled up when you have young children what should we focus on this year or be aware of yourself? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Focus on yourself. Be aware of yourself and improve yourself each day. That's what you should focus on this year and every year. <laughs> Your money. All right. And how you're going to get more of it and from who you're going to get it from. There you go. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's what we need to focus on every year. We're already on a date and you told him let's go to the bank and he told told him to tell her the amount I wanted. Oh, okay. He and told him the told him to tell the amount you wanted. Good for you, girl. Get your money. Zara, zero sprinkle sprinkle. <laughs> I mean, some men will uh, literally let you take them to the bank. That's that those are the good ones. The ones that will literally drive up to a bank per your suggestion. Okay. I just can't fake laugh if he's not funny. I can't do it. Well, think about how unfunny he is and laugh at that. How he thinks he's funny. 
laugh because he thinks he's funny. That's that's the best I can tell you. You said laugh at him. You walk around the house saying sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Aisha, okay, sprinkle, sprinkle, girl. Shira, I can't believe what your audience think they can get away with, even though it has never worked. It don't work on broke, dusty men. It, it only works on men who are willing to drive up to the bank. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay, y'all, y'all aren't the targets. It's not going to work on you because you don't have enough money in your bank to drive up to to ask to tell a girl to name the amount. You don't have that, so it's not possible with you. We know this. That's why we nobody have asked you to roll up to a bank <laughs> because they can tell too. Okay, a drive through. <laughs> That's why it's not possible because we know you can't do it. So why would we ask you to do the impossible? We're not going to sit up there and ask a man that we know ain't got no enough money in his bank to go to the bank. We're going to let you pay your little bills, pay your little rent, you know, pay your little car note, and we ain't going to bother with you. Okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. We're not, you ain't the target. And a lot of men keep, uh, someone asked this earlier, actually, in the comments. Why do these men think that? They, you know, that women actually, uh, <laughs> y'all aren't the targets. That's so funny. Y'all are not the targets. That would be like you, uh, DoorDash driver. That would be like you literally thinking, like, that would be like a bunch of old ladies, you know, a bunch of old ladies saying, oh, these young guys, you know, they don't know how to treat a woman. And, you know, we have to teach them. Are you literally aiming to date elderly women as a young man with no money in your bank account? No, that's not y'all's target. Okay. Y'all aren't trying to date AARP. We are. We trying to date AARP. That's our targets because we know AARP got some money in their bank. Okay. We know the AARP members got money in their accounts. We know. And we know that they're going to drive up to the bank and give it to us or that we can get it out of them somehow. Somewhere. We know you don't have no AARP. We know you don't have seniority on your job. We know you haven't gotten a raise yet. We know you still in the beginner stages of life and trying to get your money together. Okay. We're not going to ask you to sacrifice what you don't have. Okay. So you are not the target for the umpteenth million time. <laughs> okay. So leave your worries. Take a deep breath. And say this. Repeat after me. I am not the target. And you should feel better now. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Unless you do got some AARP. If you on here, we know you ain't got no money. So, all right. <laughs> yes, repeat. I am not the target. I don't have to worry. No woman wants me for my money because I don't like. Okay. You might be able to sleep better at night now. Somebody had to explain it thoroughly. Okay. If you don't have AARP, step aside. You ain't the target. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Trying to tell you. <laughs> All right. Yes. He said, how did I snag James? I knew he had AARP. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> okay. Sure. <laughs> yep. I knew when he pulled out. 
I knew he was going through his midlife crisis and I took advantage of it, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's how I, that's how I got him. Okay. Why do poor men hit on me? How do I make them unattractive to me? Ask them for money, KK. Sprinkle, sprinkle. As soon as they walk up to you, start asking them to pay for stuff. They will walk right away. <laughs> Y'all, I'm just joking about the AARP, but you know, the older, going through a midlife crisis. That's the best time to get. Okay. When you see the older guys going through their midlife crisis, that is the perfect time. That's the perfect time. You see an old man in a convertible, he going through his midlife crisis. Get him. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. The reason he got a convertible is to show you off. Sit next to him. Okay. He's going through that midlife crisis and he need a, he need a chick by his side to pay bills for. Go get him. Make sure it's a nice car though. Don't be don't be hopping in no uh, non-luxury convertibles. Sprinkle, sprinkle. There you go. How do you get out of paying rent? It's only 200 but I don't want to do it. <clears throat> okay. Who are you paying rent with? If you are living with a man. I don't know if you're living with a man. Are you sleeping with him? Tell him that's his payment. Okay. Okay. Every time you sleep with them, that's a hundred dollars. Sleep with them two times a month, and there go your rent. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. Tell him it's a turn off when he asks you for that two hundred dollars. You can't see him as the man. A dusty tried talking to you and set your standards that he need to give me money and they did for a bit, ghosted and now coming back. Why? Because he got some more money, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You ready to give you some more? Get collect your money. Um. They are angry because they know you're going to reject them. Okay. Please, Shira, how did you know that your husband was the one when he paid all the bills? Sprinkle, sprinkle. When he paid my car off, he paid all my bills, and then he took me to the dealership. I knew he was the one. Okay. <clears throat> when I didn't have to work no more, and all bills was paid, car paid off. You know, shopping money. That's the one. That's how I knew because I was like, this how this is nice. This is how I'm gonna live. Cause I ain't finna pay. Period. All right. <laughs> there you go. Do you get the money before or after the loving? Before, always before. It's called an investment. They need to invest in you long term before they get, get your um, love. Or they need to give you something that you want. Okay. You have catfish level makeup. Good for you. Sparkle, sparkle. I take talent, girl. All right. <laughs> you are highly skilled, ma'am. Sure, you're 22 and keep maturing every day by watching you. Oh, well, I hope that you, you know, are able to see the red flags when it comes to these guys and, you know, be able to get your money. <laughs> All right. Y'all know there's some trolls and we don't mind the trolls. We just tell them how it is. They just make it more entertaining. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Eh. 
All right. Not you, not you. I'm talking about driver seat. <laughs> drive through. <laughs> Call it drive through. Okay. Do you think women who have a child should only date men who have children? Y'all keep asking me about all this kid stuff. Men shouldn't even know you have kids until they're ready to take the next step and pay all them bills. You know what I'm saying? And they want you in their life and you are exclusively dating them and they're exclusively paying your bills. They don't need to know you have no kids. They're not dating your kids. You know? And I, I said earlier, you don't have to tell everybody your business like on dates. Men don't have to know that. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're meeting a man on next Sunday and you don't need his money, but I want him to help me start a music career so I can make my own money. He likes me and he's got the network. Any advice? Girl, sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, I, I, I couldn't give you advice on that because I would never meet people for opportunities like that. They either have to hand it to me because I'm not trying to take it. You know, if they're not handing it to you or forcing it or giving it to you willingly, I'm not trying to get something out of people. Like, I don't care. Look, if, if you want me to have it, give it to me. If not, I'm not going to sit here and ask you all. Uh, I don't feel like, to me, they expect that from everyone they meet. They expect people to try to get something out of them, to get a connection or a network and stuff. It's it's bothering it to a degree, because if I, you know, if I were a person that had those type of connections, I would feel bothered if everybody that I came in contact with asked me the same question, wanted the same thing from me. It would really turn me off. So I would say, don't even go there. Don't even bother trying to get his um, connections. Be his friend, date him, you know, spend time. And then when he offers it to you, then you can have it, you know. But I really wouldn't ask for anything of the sort. Um. <laughs> okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Sure, you have to study to another city, but can't afford staying at hotel. How to initiate it to someone who lives to stay with him. Um, <laughs> ask him to pay for the hotel room first. And when he says, no, you can stay with me. Say, okay, thanks. If that's what you're looking for or whoever, girl, guy. Um, <laughs> what does it mean to be submissive and how does that look like in a country like America? Um, being submissive means letting a man finish his sentence, not correcting him when he's wrong in public in front of his friends. <laughs> and returning home at a decent hour. That's literally being submissive in America. Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. All right, maybe giving him the remote when you already finished watching your shows. <laughs> you said that's a pushover. Yep. Let them finish talking here. You could interrupt them later at home in the privacy of your you could correct them later in the car, you know. Mm. Sure, what's the best start? Up project, the one that you're passionate about. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Sure, what if you're not naturally submissive? Then you, it doesn't take a lot. Like if, if you have to correct everyone, practice not correcting people, you know, because that, if you don't let people finish their sentence, practice allowing people to finish their sentence. Okay, that's submissive. That's submissive enough. <laughs> And only men with money who pay all the bills get 
that level of submission. Okay. <laughs> in public. I didn't say nothing about private. There you go. <laughs> in America, you said America. You didn't say uh, different cultures or countries. You said America. Okay. They made a song called American Woman for a reason. To be submissive in America, you let that man look like he know what he's doing in public. And when he, when you get him in private, you tell him how it is, where he messed up. And <laughs> that's pretty much it. Hey, Shira, is, is it normal not to date anyone for four months or break up and heal? Girl, I don't know what y'all need to heal from. It's normal to do whatever you do. You know what I'm saying? It, what's normal for one person may not be for the next person. I don't think you need to heal from relationships unless, you know, I think you just need to move on and recognize why you broke up and not to repeat dating the same type of person um, so that, you know, you don't repeat the pattern. Try to date someone totally different. Okay. How do you know if your ex is talking to someone new and you, I broke up with him a while ago, we reconnect. I wouldn't care. Is, is my ex paying these bills? Then I don't care what he's doing. If he's not paying my, my bills, I'm not concerned. I'm not reconnecting unless a man is paying them bills. You know, that's what it needs to come to. Why would you reconnect with an ex if they're not trying to pay them bills? And they try to pay them bills, then yes, please reconnect. <laughs> Remember, a man goes towards what he's investing into deeply. So if he's not investing into you, then you should be concerned. Okay, get his money. I told y'all, get the man's money if you want him to come back. <laughs> get his money here he takes you out and pays if you want him to come back all the way get his money make him spend all right you said the guy you're seeing is so smart and mature and he keeps talking about stuff I don't understand how to act smart <laughs> read a book sprinkle sprinkle girl whatever he's talking about go get a book on it and read it <laughs> okay educate yourself at least educate yourself enough to understand what he's saying so that you can add a few words here and there that's it google it if you don't want to buy a book sure what do you think about okay why y'all keep asking me about other people I don't think about other people unless they owe me some money. They giving me some money or they asking me how much money I want. Y'all literally don't really realize this. <laughs> I think that anyone who asks me what I think about other people um, doesn't appreciate my level of knowledge to ask me a better question. <laughs> okay. Yes. How to let a man put me on his direct deposit? Tell him to. Say, I hate really talking about finance and money, and I just want to focus on the relationship. So it's easier if we just get on direct deposit. Um, and so whenever I need something, you could just put it in there without me having to go through this whole hoopla of asking you, waiting on you. And you might be busy at work or something. So I just rather, you know, get that out of the way. Okay. How should how should you stop listening to rap music to become more feminine? Um, if that's what you feel is going to help you. <laughs> okay. If no one approaches you in real life, is it a good idea to do dating online? If I mean, do both. Mhm. <laughs> 
Okay. Do both. You said y'all delusional. She's speaking from a stance of privilege. No, I'm not. Because I didn't start off like this. <laughs> I thought the exact same way when I was 22. Okay. Same way. That's how I got where I am. When I was 22 years old, I, I was rolling my eyes and not giving no man the time of day unless he was paying for whatever I was drinking, looked like he had a nice car, looked like he could pay some bills. I was not entertaining that. Once I made up my mind not to entertain no dust ever again, that's what happened. I got results. And many people told me I was delusional when they were dismissed, but I'm not delusional because I got exactly what I actually what I wanted. <laughs> so we're only delusional until then we become gold diggers. Then we become housewives. Then we become privileged. So delusional is the first step, ladies. So when a man calls you delusional, you're on the right track. Remember that. Because after delusional, once they see you with that old man, with that AARP and that new car you got, then you're a gold digger. Okay, when you get married, then you are housewife. And then you're privileged. So, stay on track, yes. Only you can say what you are. <laughs> so, make sure you stay, um, keep your standards high and don't, don't fluctuate for no dusty because if they're not fluctuating for you and giving you money, then why should you fluctuate your standards for them? Okay. You like to be a gold digger, but I like to have a career. You can have both, girl. Just make sure you get his money, save yours. Okay. What's my sign? Dollar sign. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Somebody asked me my sign. Dollar sign. Dusty's try so hard to lower our self-esteem and confidence. I know. They try, but they don't. Delusion is a good thing because that's how great ideas start. Think about the smartphone. Wasn't that a delusion about 50 years ago? When someone said, you know what? There should be a way to call people and have a, a camera and a computer all in one thing. That's weird. That's silly. That's delusional. But now we got it because somebody had a delusional idea that they turn into a reality. If you don't have delusions, you can't create. You can't create the life you want if you don't first have a delusion. OK, I had a delusion that I didn't have to work no more and I didn't have to work no more. I had a delusion that I deserved more. And guess what? I got it. So have all the delusions you need to have to get to where you need to go. If a broke Dusty had a delusion of being rich and having money and up in his career, he might just do that. But they rather settle in their current reality versus having delusions. Why don't y'all go have a career delusion or a business delusion or how to get some money delusion? Okay. Because the next step is actually getting it. Kanye had a delusion and now look, he he <laughs> he keep having delusions and getting what he wants. Okay. So just keep doing the same thing. Okay. Do <clears throat> they never have delusions. It would be nice if a Dusty had some delusions about getting paid and actually came through, you know. You said bums under the tar will be offended by your dreams. Elevate anyway. Exactly. Being delusional is part of manifestation. Exactly. So. I should be delusional. That's why I get what I want. Uh, you said no goals but want a wife. He can't keep a wife.
Okay, you was on a date and you did that. You've always wanted kid quotes when he asked and you res he responded, well, is that a yes or a no? Do you have kids? What would you have done? I would have said, why do you want to know if I have kids? Do you like kids or something? <laughs> that would have been my next question. I've run into a lot of weirdos. Are you looking for children? That would be my next line. And he, if you don't shut up after that, then you end the date. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> So, that's how I feel about it. Like, if they're adamant about knowing if you got kids or not, what are they doing? Like, when they ask you if you got kids, what do you think they're doing? If they just want to know so bad, what do you think they're doing? Let me tell you what they're doing. They're figuring out how good to treat you or how bad to treat you. They're figuring out... Um, how much to spend on you versus how much not to spend on you. They're figuring out how desperate you are and all of that. That's all like that's all inclusive when a man asks if you have kids. So you don't tell them until he's ready to become stepdaddy or meet the children after he didn't pay a lot of the bills that you have. You know, they're they're not. They're assessing you on how, how much they have to impress you, how impressive they have to be, and how much money they have to spend. They're not going to spend as much money on you if they know you got kids, because then they'll think you're going to be desperate to find them a daddy. And they're not going to treat you the same, not going to ask you the same questions, not take you to the same places. So you don't tell no man that you got kids. If he's there to date you, he's there to date you, period. That's it. If you want to know if I got kids, wait, pay some bills, and then you might find out if I do or not. <laughs> there you go. That's that's how you got to do it these days. All right. You said just gathering information on how to treat you. Exactly. So lie, because men will lie. Men will lie and say that they ain't married and ain't got no kids and single and free, but go home to their wife and three kids, dogs, cats, hamster, and have zero shame or guilt. So you can do the same, ladies. Okay. All right. Um. <laughs> yes, you gotta lie. Believe me. It's you'll. If you don't believe me, do an experiment. If you are a, a if you date a lot of guys, if you're going out on a lot, a lot of guys, go do this experiment. Tell one and when he asks, yes, you got kids. Tell another one no and see which see the difference. Okay. He asked about my sexual history. <laughs> uh, what did he say? How many men have you slept with? Tell him more than you. More men than you slept with. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure I've slept with more men than you slept with, sir. And how many women have you slept with? Oh, okay. So you're not that experienced. Darn it. Winter Rose. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. What did you do and what should I do for your 40th birthday? I'm an introvert. Girl, I don't even remember my 40th birthday. Um, I probably had a cake. Probably ate some dinner somewhere. I don't remember. <sighs> so long ago. Oh, well. Do you think it's better to have no sex before marriage when dating a rich guy? 
it depends on what culture you're from. Because <laughs> a lot of guys expect, you know, sex. <laughs> Especially if they're paying all them bills and buying you nice gifts. And y'all are on the way to, you know, being married. Um, if you're maybe wait till you get engaged, that might be better. <laughs> At least you got a ring. <laughs> Make sure it's real. I wouldn't tell people I was a virgin. There you go. Sprinkle, sprinkle. They, I would act like, you know, they might get some tomorrow. If they act right and then they never do. How to be a stay-at-home wife. Stay at home and don't go to work. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, let him pay all the bills. <laughs> Dusty's always talking about body count. Exactly. I don't know why. They, I don't know why men care how many men you slept with. It doesn't matter. We still gonna fake it. <laughs> If you ain't doing your job, period. Okay. Period. We're going to let you think you did a good job. Don't worry. All right. It's... it's it does matter y'all be looking like zombies. And y'all bank accounts be looking like a cemetery. Imp <laughs> Crickets. Okay. Y'all be looking like a zombie. And what do y'all look like? A dusty? <laughs> he said women be looking like zombies. All right. Sir, I'm sorry. You're not going to find women who haven't had a lot of experience these days unless you find a virgin, you know. And it, most women going to lie about the number of women, men they slept with or women these days anyway. Okay. So you ain't ever going to get the truth. So why even try? <laughs> You're never going to get the truth. So why even try? You said still bugs. They want a mother. Okay, so let me ask you a question. If you was with the same man for 10 years and y'all slept together every day, which is highly unlikely, versus sleeping with a different man every day. <laughs> it's still the same wear and tear. Maybe, you know, especially... Unless there's way like different sizes and births and stuff. <clears throat> That's what they worried about. If they the little thing gonna get felt. Make sure she gonna feel my little thing. <laughs> She's gonna be able to feel my little thing. I mean, if she didn't have more than four or five, she ain't going to feel my little thing. Don't be worried. Just, you know, we'll pretend we can feel it, okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Pay them bills, girl. Sir, I'm sorry. I was getting feminine energy over here. Pay them bills and we'll scream loud. There you go. There you go. Um... Why would a man want you when you pretended to have no personality or to offer when you speak to him to deter him? He keeps trying. <laughs> Maybe he knows that you're faking having no personality. Okay. He, he know you. He know better. More black men have lower body count than women across the board. How is the math adding up? Because they got to pay and they they can't pay. We get it free. Okay. They can't afford it. That's why. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Shoot. If it was free, y'all. If it was free, 
y'all will be way up there, okay? The reason we up there is free and we get paid. Sprinkle, sprinkle. How you doing? Okay. We get up, we we get up with full stomachs, little buzz, money in our accounts, bills paid, you know, gifts. When y'all get up, y'all just get up and leave. Word and worry about if you're gonna see them again and get to get it free again, or if they're gonna make you start all over, paying and stop. So of course, women are able to sleep with more men because they're benefiting from it and it's free. <laughs> so you're you wouldn't give them any number. Okay, y'all. So that's why these dudes are so mad and angry because they got to pay. Okay. Never wait for a man. Always back. I have backups. That's right. Always have a backup. <laughs> Keep a backup. More women than men, even the women keep these minority numbers of men in relationship rotation. More men can keep his zipper up because he can't. Because first of all, it costs money. I keep telling you. A man can't just go out and women throw themselves at him on the street for free. They want something. And if he ain't got it, he can't get it. Okay. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> All right. After you let a man devalue you by mistake, is there any way to change how he sees me? A man can't devalue you. Only you can devalue yourself. Okay. <laughs> like literally, a man cannot devalue you. Only you can devalue yourself. Men will see a woman as being devalued if she sleeps with a man, but... If, if he was married to that woman and the woman says, I can't sleep with you because you will devalue me, he wouldn't really think that he would be devaluing his wife now, would he? So you can't allow people to use that word devalue because to me, if the man has money, if he has knowledge that you want, if he's someone that you like or respect, and he has money, he can't devalue you. He can only up your value. <laughs> okay? That's my, my point. Don't sleep with nobody that you're ashamed to say something about. And like, Did you sleep with him? Heck no. That, that's devaluing. You sleep with a dusty. Yeah, when you sleep with somebody that you can brag on, that's not being devalued. <laughs> so only sleep with men you can brag on, okay? Sprinkle, sprinkle, or get something out of. That way you leave with more value because you leave with his money or, you know, some type of status, okay? Get get your money, girls. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Set your own standards. You don't, you're not devalued if you left with something. <laughs> mm-hmm. You said, is the problem with stuck zipper or loose legs? The problem is men will offer uh, women the world and money just to get a little piece of her. It's not your zipper, it's your mouth that be talking, baby. I love you. I'll give you everything you want. If you need anything, just let me know. You're so beautiful. It's y'all mouth. Y'all the one be trying to talk all that game. To get it, y'all the desperate ones. Y'all the ones that chase. <laughs> okay. Let me take you to dinner. So, you know, a lot of times you're going to chase, you you chase them for some reason, right? <laughs> if you don't, if you don't get to catch it, that's not, you know, if you don't get to catch this, oh, well, you didn't have enough money. 
Okay. The the last lower love. Okay, the last lover you were with, he owned a Bentley and nothing after that. I'm focused on me and what I need next. And then it's okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. How do men view women who are not having sex till marriage? Um, honestly, I wouldn't tell them. Like, you don't need to tell them that. They need to date you long enough to think they're going to get some and then figure it out. But don't tell them right away. At least milk the situation for a little while. And then they may like you enough and respect you enough to respect your values. But don't start with that. Never start with that. <laughs> you know, make them chase as long as they as long as you can. And when they ask you why you won't give it up, just start crying and say, I'm saving myself for my husband. And that might be the words they've been waiting on, girl. You never know. Or they might think you lying. Depends. <laughs> All right. Okay. Should you be open with a man that you're looking for to provide that you're married? You want them to pay bills and take care of you, but you can't leave your husband too much history. I need my bills paid. Up. Yeah. If you're honest with somebody and they like you way more than you like them, they won't care. Why do men want to sleep with a specific woman if he has options who may be more attractive? Um, I don't know. Maybe they do do something extra good that the other woman can't do. I don't know. All right. <laughs> um, I have no idea. Would... What do you do after you sleep with him? He's invested a lot already. He wants me to move in, but I need the marriage first in case he dies or a fight breaks. <laughs> um, <clears throat> a lot of people need to see how it is to live with someone before they actually marry them. So maybe spend a few nights here and there, but don't officially all the way move in. <clears throat> And then, like, when you know he can't live without you, then you tell him, well, I really want to move in, but I, you know, we need to get married first. Or I, else I have to move on. You give him that ultimatum after he can't live without you. So tease him for a few months, then a few nights in, a few nights out. And then when he can't live without you, let him know. Okay. Right. What? Oh my gosh. Y'all are asking me some crazy questions. I'm not even answering some of these questions. Oh, Kira, we live together. But he's all, he's paid all the bills for two years, but now his business isn't doing well. He asked me what I'd be with. Uh, break up time. Sprinkle, sprinkle, Kira. Ah, on to the next one. On to the next one. Um, where are you going to work? The strip club? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the donation. Uh, it's breakup time. <laughs> Don't get sucked in, baby. Don't don't do it. Y'all ever see that's that's the the signs of of uh, uh beware of unstable entrepreneurs. Yes. Y'all y'all remember Vivica Fox on that Frankie Lyman movie? She he was like a, a singer, and then he he wasn't selling no records. Y'all remember Vivica Fox? She had to get out on that corner. Make her man some money. <laughs> don't don't be biblical. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's how it starts. They, that's, they're asking you to work. <laughs> that, that that is how I feel. That that's how I would feel. Are you you asking me to go stand out on a corner? <laughs> Ew. 
And then he left her for Halle Berry's. Yes. Mm -mm. Okay. Don't build up no man. Don't ever build up no man. If he can't handle it, it's time. For, he don't need a woman. Okay. Listen very carefully. If he can't handle it, he don't need a woman. You got to go. He should be man enough to let you go. Say, I'm sorry that you're having a tough time. And I know you can't afford, you know, to pay things. And so I'm going to let you get yourself back together. I got to go. Bye. <laughs> Um, he should get a second job, of course. Yeah, he, he was a provider for two years. Okay. Well, that was a good two years. Time to go. <laughs> Next. Should you be responding to DMs and how should they approach me? to even continue a conversation with cash app this is how you this is how you approach a woman's dms what's your cash app what's your you know what's your vimo what's your zill what's, whatever how can i get you some money that's that's the best way for me everybody else get deleted and sprinkle sprinkle <laughs> there you go What's a good timeline after Dayton to marry, acting bipolar and bored to scare him thinking I'll change my mind about him? He He's the idea that I want to wait until I graduate, but I don't. Girl, you, you already sound bipolar in that comment. You don't know if you're acting. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Honestly, power puff. <laughs> You're too invested in him and he's not invested enough in you. So make him spend more money. Okay. More money. The more money he spend, the closer he'll get to getting you a ring. Okay. So take make him take you shopping, buy expensive things. Um, make him pay all the car notes. Like make him spend his money. He's gonna follow his investment. There you go. And if, if you guys, if there's some men watching that don't agree that a woman should leave a man if he can't afford, you know, the bills anymore. First of all, he can't afford a woman. So she needs to uh, unburden him by leaving because he needs to be focusing on getting his business back up. And get his money. Okay. Because obviously the woman was the distraction. That led him down the path. That got him you know broke. So if he can't concentrate on two things at once. And keep his money up. And keep his woman happy. Then he can't maintain that woman. Or that relationship. So she needs to let him go figure that out. She does not need to step up. And be his mama. She need to go let him figure that out on his own. Okay. What do rich men do for a living? Best jobs to look for? Um, a lot of things. <laughs> Just look up top paying professions on Google. All right. Ugly Dusties make it to their life goal to break you down. Y'all ever notice that? <laughs> it's easier than climbing. Dusties will break you down because they don't feel like climbing up. Okay. Um, y'all remember that movie, The Wizard of Oz? The old school one. Y'all remember when Dorothy and them wanted them apples on the tree and they couldn't reach them? Or the tree, you know, or the trees got mad because they were trying to take the apples. And so they started insulting the trees and making fun of them and, and like, you know, doing all this crazy stuff. So the trees would throw their apples at them. That's what a dusty try to do, you know. <laughs> this will make you mad enough to throw your, throw your apples. <laughs> All right, so now.
Um, you said he ain't paying, he ain't laying. <laughs> okay, Iman, sprinkle, sprinkle. Your husband's brother and wife is obsessed with my family and is ruining my life after my husband got a good job. Now he lives with them and he won't divorce me but paying my bills. Huh? As long as your bills pay, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Girl, get some life insurance. Since he, he won't divorce you, you might as well get paid some other way. All right. There are Pikmisha channels. The Dusties can go mingle at Why Are They Here? Ugh. I don't, you know what? I, I don't know any Pikmisha channels. Uh, I don't watch Pikmisha videos, but I know that they are out there. So the Dusties, there's no challenge there, okay? They they being honored and praised over there and called Kang and whatnot, okay? God and Kang and it's it's boring. It's no challenge because why would you go? Why would you go somewhere and people are giving you false praise and you know you ain't even got nobody's type of money and. Why would you go somewhere and somebody's continuously praising you, calling you king, and you got to check your bank account every time you go pump gas? Okay, it's fake. They can't. They can't accept it. It's too fake. It's too desperate. It's too fake. So they come over here and get this dose of reality. <sighs> yes, king. Yes, God. In my phone, I gotta check my bank account before I go to the gas station. You know, it doesn't it doesn't equate, you know. So they already know they ain't no king and no god because they broke. <laughs> they can't accept Pit Misha's desperation on that level because they know deep down inside they are providers. And when a woman wants to do something for a man or call him king or try to help him out of every situation. He get tired. Like he's being babied. Like he has no balls. Like he has no backbone. Because once pick me should get a hold of you, you know, you, you know, you don't feel like a man no more. You feel like a pit. So <laughs> they want to come over here and feel like a man. At least they'll be insulted like a man, you know, at least they can own that because it's true. They can own being called a Dusty, but they can't own being called no Kang or no God, rubbing two pennies together, checking a bank account at the gas station. They can't, they can't feel that. <laughs> so they said they Kangs without a Kingdom. <laughs> That's why you divested years ago to the real king. Okay. How should finances be sorted after marriage? What's his is yours and what's yours is yours. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, you mean like in a divorce? <laughs> the woman should get most of it. <laughs> Especially if she got kids. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um. If a man you're dating asks if you're taking, talking to or seeing or having relations with someone else, what do you say? Why would he ask? He hasn't asked for a commitment. No lie and say he the only one. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Lie and say he's the only one. There you go. All right. He know you lie. He just don't want the truth. He just wants to see if you're going to laugh to save his ego. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. You're 25, been with your boyfriend for four years and we live together and he's not as generous as I like, but he's looking, he's good looking. I'm not sure if I should leave or stay for love. Girl. 25, it's time to go find somebody with some real money who can give you a lifestyle. Okay. You are, you played house with a youngster who's good looking. Keep that in your mind. Keep that in your memory. Now go get you the old bald dude 
with a nice car and a nice house who's going to give you a credit card to go shopping. And whenever you sleep with him, you think of the other one. Okay, that's what he for. And that's what the other ones can give you the lifestyle. You can raise your kids in the suburbs, drink wine in the afternoons, and chill by the pool, go shopping whenever you want. That's the life you want. Okay. Other dude is just going to get worse and uglier and older. So you might as well go get the ugly one with the money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Okay. And if he's good looking, Chances are when you start hitting the uh, the age of 40, 45, and you didn't have kids and stuff, you're going to start looking at other people. Okay. And he could possibly leave you for a younger woman. But if you are the younger woman, you good. So go get the go get the one that's willing to spend and give you the lifestyle that you want. Because you might love him, but you might not like or love the lifestyle he can give you, which means you have to you have to live that life and he might not be enough and he could leave at any time. So go get the lifestyle. OK, you could you can always love him. You can you can get on a plane with your scarf and your sunglasses and sing. I will always love you and still get up and go leave and go get you somebody else. OK. <laughs> All right. So you don't make enough money for me. I got to go. You was cute. I will always love you. Bittersweet memories. That is all I'm taking with me. Because you ain't giving me no money. Because that's all you can take. Because he ain't giving you nothing. Okay. That's all you could take because you ain't got nothing else. He ain't give you nothing. You know, all you could take is in memory. And there you go. <laughs> and sing it. Tell him you will always love him, but you got to go now. All right. But that's the truth. It literally is the truth. You can't do it. He can't do nothing for you at this point. You're ready to up. up up, you're ready to upgrade your lifestyle. You're ready to to go shopping. You're ready to pick out houses, cars. You ready? To, you ready to go on vacations? And he's still not ready for any of that. So you have to go to where you know where you got to go. They can. They cannot do anything for you. Just looks, okay. Just keep his picture and look at him every once in a while and be like, yep, that's that was mine. But I had to let him go because he ain't had no money. There you go. <laughs> mm-hmm. You said pygmies know that they're being used. They feel that they are winning with their Dusty. Dusty stay giving all of her money to the real lady that he wants. Exactly. Like, Y'all, I hate to say it, but I, you know, some of the guys that I dated back in the day had pygmies your girlfriends, but they would take her money, her car, her everything, and, and totally, you know, give it to me pay for my stuff, <laughs> drive to where I was. So I already know, okay? They don't appreciate. <laughs> we already know. If you pick Misha, that's what your man doing. And you probably don't know. <laughs> Do you think it's sustainable to have more than one sugar daddy? Yes. Should all these educated women being used by dust? Look at all these educated women being used by dusties. Oh my goodness. What do you think about athletes? Um, they make a lot of money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. How to level up confidence in yourself. Um, know that you are whatever you think you are and be that. 
You know, don't don't let other people tell you who you are. You tell yourself who you are and who you want to be. And that's what you go by. You know, don't don't listen to people. Only be what you want. Think how you want to think. If people have an opinion, they need to put some money with it. <laughs> Cash at me your opinion, okay? Just don't care and stay unbothered what other people think of you. And know that you're, you know, whatever you think you are. Think positive of yourself. How do you ask money in a way that doesn't sound seem downgrading? You mentioned things that you need funding for. You need to think about how you're going to finance, how you're going to do certain things. You say that you spent money that to help another person and now you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. You just mention things in plain conversation and see if they offer to help you. Like, oh my gosh, I had to pay my grandma's mortgage um, this month and now I have to figure out what I'm going to do about my bills. But, you know, I couldn't let her go without. So even though it's a lie, they may offer to help you. That's how you kind of let people know that you're able and willing to receive a nice gift or donation from them. Okay. You got to laugh. Okay. <laughs> Should you put what? Have an uplifting theme song in your head. Okay, yes. That that helps build self-confidence for sure. Sure should host a rich mix and mingle. Now y'all can do that. Just go to the club. Go to the bar. Go to the rich area of town. That's a rich mi mix and mingle. <laughs> okay. You're looking for a future husband, how to say nicely on the first date or I'm looking for a provider and to be a housewife in silence. You just give him a look. Okay. Don't ever say that. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you say that, he's he's leaving quick, fast and in a hurry and you will never get a call back. Okay. That would be equivalent to a man um, going on a date saying, I'm looking for someone that cooks, cleans and does laundry. <laughs> Think about it. Men have to be tricked into that. You can't just come out and say it. I'm looking for a provider and I want to be a housewife. He's going to look at you like you really are crazy and he's going to run for his life. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you for the donation. Do not ever say that on a date. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. You act like you are worthy enough to be provided for. You act like you don't spend money when you are dating men. You act, You have to act like you deserve the best and you will not reach in your purse ever. You have to walk, talk, and act like you don't pay bills when you date some dude. That's the energy you have to give, okay? The guy that you're dating needs to know just by looking at you, that they already know they got to pay these bills, that they already know your wifey material, that they are, the more a man spends on you and invests in you, the closer you are to marriage. Okay. Just keep that in your mind. So first you got to give them the spend. You don't come out and tell like y'all are a lot of women. I feel like Y'all be giving away too much information and y'all really need to keep it quiet. Should we stop paying for dates? If you paying for dates, I rebuke you. We, I, we need to do an exorcism right now. Where's my holy water? We're going to rebuke the spirit of Pygmisha up out of you. Everybody bow their heads. We... I rebuke the spirit of pick Misha up out of you. <sighs> Do not ever pay on a date again. Period. Amen. Okay. Period. If, if she try to come back, you, uh, you know, say Hail Mary three times by Tupac. Okay. <laughs> You don't want no ride or die. You want to be, you know, you don't want to die. 
What you need is a man to pay for all things, all dates. That, that's your goal. I saw somebody pay on a date today. I ain't even going to lie. I was mad. I was writing notes to Layla, passing them in the restaurant like we was in school. I said, did you see she paid on a date? <laughs> Anyway, what? <laughs> I witnessed a girl pay on a date today. I was upset and mad. I had to leave the restaurant, I had to get up out of there. And then I saw the only cars that were parked out there. He had a nice truck, like a big old four by four. He he had some type of hat in there that said something about tech. So, you know, he had a good job, right? She driving a minivan with a car seat in the back and she paid for the date. How about to give her my card? But it was only to the level up store. So I don't know if she would have got it. But man, I was mad. I was like, oh my God. This lady got kids. This dude got a tech job. And she paying. You said that's her job. <laughs> I was like, no. I wouldn't have ever paid. I was like. <sighs> I'm, I'm not desperate enough that bad to go on no date that I got to pay. I'll stay at home and pay for my own DoorDash <laughs> and watch watch my own TV and look how I want to look. I ain't getting dressed up to go pay. Are you cray cray? <laughs> yeah, I don't like to, I, you know, I don't like to get, I don't know these people, but let me start off. Okay, like. I don't even want to make nobody mad by telling you what these people look like, how old they were. I don't want to get into stereotypes and whatnot, but I will just say it was an interracial couple. That's all I'm going to say. <clears throat> and that, and I'm done. And it's not the way you think. It's the opposite. <laughs> okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. No, opposite. L, opposite. Switch switch the races. There you go. That's what it was. No. White male. You're not sure if this true you heard about women buying their own wedding ring. Girl. Mm -mm. People are too desperate these days. I would rather stay single if I got to do all of that. Girl. <clears throat> and you know what? The sad thing is women that do all that, they're not going to stay with that person very long. They're not. They're just they're biding time, paying for their own wedding ring, paying on dates. They're just biding time because that man don't want them if they're not paying, period. So you got to remember that. That man don't want you if he ain't paying, period. He don't want you if he's not paying. Repeat after me, ladies. If he's not paying, he don't want you. You biding time. That's it. Do you buy the man's ring Which, with his own money? Yes. By the time y'all get married, he should be paying your bills and putting direct deposits in your account. You can use that money for his ring. Okay. You said maybe it was a business. It wasn't no business dinner, baby. They were sitting right next to each other. Y'all know how I tell y'all to sit right next to the dude instead of across from? She was sitting right next to him, like up on him in the booth. <clears throat> it was not a business dinner. What actually a great first date look like? 
It don't look like the woman is paying. <laughs> okay, so are you asking me how he probably got her to pay? Um, honestly, here's my thing. If it to me, it seemed like that she was not as leveled up as she could be. And she did not look like the type of woman that a man would pay for. That's all. <clears throat> and even if she didn't look like the type of woman that a man would pay for, I would have still demanded that he pay because I'm a lady. <laughs> okay. I, I don't care if she looking like what, who did it and why. I'm still going to want him to pay. That's just a gentlemanly thing to do. She could have looked like however she wanted. She was the woman. So he should have paid. She said, you said she probably, Taisha, you said she probably saw nothing wrong with paying. Probably not. Um, women do things out of desperation. And yes, the guy will play you. Girl. Yes, I have seen too many women pay on dates and like they don't even look that bad. Like it's their attitude and their standards and how they feel about themselves that is making them get up and open that wallet and pay because these women aren't that bad looking. They're not even terrible looking. OK, they don't need to be paid. If they have that low of a self-esteem problem within to reach into their wallets, that's something that they need to fix within. It has nothing to do with that man. Because if a woman wants a man to pay, she's going to tell him, get up and go pay the bill. Go pay the bill. Or, you know, or slide the bill over to them and say, thank you for dinner. It was delicious. They're not going to sit there and open that wallet. And if the man asks her to pay, she's going to get up and walk and look at him crazy because she don't take that. That's not what she deals with. You know? So, you know, if you're out on a date and that man is a gentleman or you just say, you know, you're such a gentleman. That's if you're not sure he's going to pay, just keep calling him a gentleman throughout the entire date. So he gets the clue that he got to pay. OK, because I would never I would be appalled. I would start tick. I, I would start like. Getting a tick. What do you mean I got to pay? Oh. oh. I gotta record this. This is borderline abuse. Like, what you say? I have to pay? I gotta record this. Let me get you on film. Because I, I have never witnessed this before. This is something new. Okay, Dusty, say say your line again. <laughs> oh, Danielle, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Thank you for the cash app, girl. I don't know if you're still here. You said, watch we change society with no more free nothing. <laughs> she should have embarrassed him. I would have. I'm like, I didn't bring my wallet. I got to pay for daycare. Because obviously she got a car seat in her minivan. I didn't bring my wallet. And then he would have had to pay. Uh-oh, Taisha, sprinkle, sprinkle. I thought this was a date. I didn't bring my wallet. Shoot. <laughs> yes, I was telling my daughter, well, she should not have paid. Mm -mm. Your ex, Dusty, used to always forget his wallet. Then I would have forgot him. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> you met a new sugar daddy who invited you on a date. What should you expect on the first day for him to pay? Sprinkle, sprinkle. It's just like any other date. He's, he's going to want to be seen in public with you. You're pretty. He wants to feel important like he's all that. He wants to impress everybody and say, look, I got me a young one. So just look cute, smile, laugh at all his boring jokes and um, 
start talking about all the things that you're going to, that you need or that you've done. And like, you know, how you dropped your favorite bottle of perfume, how you lost your earring, how you paid your grandma's mortgage, you know, and how you're trying to figure out what you're going to do. Like maybe save that for the second date, but, you know, start hinting clues and hints that that's coming. Like, you know what? My grandma called me today and I didn't really answer her phone call because I was super busy. I need to call her, you know, later this evening. Then when when you talk to him the next time, oh yeah, my grandma called, asked me to pay her mortgage, so I guess I got to do that. You know, build up. You got to keep lying. Then you be like, oh yeah, I paid her mortgage, but now I, I figure out what I'm going to do. I couldn't let couldn't let her be without. So I just I'm, I need to do some thinking right now. I might have to get a second job. Oh well, how much do you need? You know. If he go let you get a second job, if you got a job at all, if he let you drop your favorite bottle of perfume, lose your earrings and pay your grandma mortgage and don't offer you one thing, not even a gift, a pair of earrings, a new bottle of perfume or some or some rent money, then he don't really want you. OK, <laughs> so you got a pre pre lie. Then you got to update the pre lie and then lay down the real lie. OK, yeah, y'all hit that like button, sprinkle, sprinkle. So you have to build up so it's believable. The best liars build it up, okay? They add little details. You said I'm speaking from privilege? Now, how is lying speaking from privilege? All people lie. Broke people lie. Privileged people lie. <laughs> I should be speaking from privilege. I've been married for tw almost 20 years. I put in my work, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If I was still speaking from property, property, so it would be wrong. Okay? Don't be mad. I did what I said and I lived my life how exactly how I said I did. <laughs> I'm supposed to be speaking from privilege by this time, sir. You know, I am in my 40s. I remember life at 20. I was still getting people to pay for me. That's that's what that's what looking good gets you. Money. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. For women. Anyway. Cry if he catches you in lies. Mm -hmm. Don't act possessed and blame the devil at don't do that. You said, okay, we'll make up fake Aunt Ethel then. Just make up a fake person. Great grandma. Say your great grandma. She probably already gone. All right. Make up someone that don't exist or is already gone. Okay. If you're if you're uncomfortable. <laughs> you said if you don't get what you want just ghost right if you don't see them giving you what you want in the near future if you don't see that they like you enough to offer you anything then yes please ghost and get out and hurry up and go some do some you know do something else because they're not ever going to do anything for you if they're not you know giving off that provider energy Okay, they're not gonna do it. Good looking men can get to the bag too by swindling old. Of course they can. You know, that's what you know, there, there's cougars out there and sugar mamas. Okay, you know, they want to feel on a six pack. You know, there's, there's sugar mamas out there everywhere. You know, it's not just on one side. So, your ex Dusty thought you was going to be his sugar mama. Oh my goodness, he thought wrong, didn't he? Old women need to put them good looking fellas back. <laughs> so you know.
get in where you fit in, right? I don't discriminate if a, if a Dusty trying to get him some a sugar mama, you know, more power to him. <clears throat> Shira, what if the guy asks you when you're free to call you, then he don't call twice? How do you react or what should I just ignore him? Let me read this again. What if the guy asks me when you are free to call and you, you then he don't call twice? How to react? Um, that sounds like game to me, girl. <laughs> that sounds like game. Act like you forgot if he, whenever he contacts you the next time. Um, so yeah, I do think that's, he's playing games. So just act like you didn't even remember he was supposed to call or you supposed to call or whatever. It's like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot. So don't worry, you know, if he says, I'm sorry, I forgot to call or what are you doing? It's like, oh, nothing, what you doing? Like, act like it didn't even bother you. That will kill him. <laughs> okay. Because it means you forgot and you didn't even worry about it. Do you think some sort of spark is essential for marriage? Um, it depends on why you're getting married. <laughs> you know, there's people get married for a different reason. So whatever reason you have to get married, if the spark is for that reason, then it's for that reason. You know, some people have a spark when they see someone because they are attractive. Some people have a spark or chemistry with someone because they have good conversation and they vibe with them. Some people see a man walk in with some money and handing it to him and that's the spark. So it depends on why you're marrying them. Okay. You say you're speaking to a guy. He always finds excuses and never meets you. He always trying to say, I'm a provider. I'll take you X, Y, Z. So I ghosted him after four months. Girl, four months. You took him that long? Girl, he would have been ghosted like day three. All right. Didn't say, er, you, you know, if he was giving you money and stuff, if he was never giving you money, then I wouldn't have been that long talking to nobody. Four months? Well, he... How he keep you interested? How you keep somebody interested for four months with no dates or money? Uh huh. You said you watch a lot of Victorian movies on one movie. The line was husbands are to provide and lovers are for love. <laughs> okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. What's the, your Zodiac Shira? Dollar sign, baby, dollar sign. You got... <laughs> there you go. All right, y'all, I'm getting ready to go. Y'all, thank y'all so much for being here today, to this evening. Y'all click the like button. Click, click, click. If y'all like the video, click like. If y'all got some good tips, click like. If you're upset and you don't like what I'm saying on the video, still click like. <laughs> Just because you can and it's free. Okay. I, sprinkle, sprinkle. You said, why are women the prize? Because they was born that way. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, <laughs> okay. They was born with what makes them the prize. There you go. <laughs> That's all you got to do is be a woman. You, you the prize, period. Um, I 
you're going to use that dollar sign. Yes. You say first prize. Y'all just know that you are born a prize. That's it. You are the prize. People have to win you over, impress you, do what it takes to get you. You know, that's what you are. If someone told you you weren't, they lied. Period. Okay. <laughs> God given, we are the prize. Period. Can you date with mental illness? Um, it depends on what mental illness you have. Is it beneficial? <laughs> you know? Is it cute? Is it quirky? Like, what does it make you do? Mm -hmm. I probably... I've probably been out on some dates with some people with mental illness and I couldn't even tell. I thought they was just different. <laughs> I just try to see the best in people. He, he different. <laughs> mm-hmm. You say you're a housewife and you don't want to lose your license? Um, I don't know how I feel about that because I don't know. I let my license go for being a mortician because I, I knew once I stopped working, I ain't going back, baby. <laughs> Okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. All women are the prize, period. Yes. Because they're a woman, and that automatically makes them the prize. Someone says you can renew it after it expires. Okay. Yeah, you can always renew it, but it's probably like a long process. I don't know. Yes, even Pick Misha is a prize. She just needs to wake up from the illusion and get on code. Yes, even Pick Misha is the prize. She hasn't figured it out yet. You know, I'll be like Morpheus and on the Matrix, and I have some some pills in my hand, but instead of pills, it's gonna be like. A paper that say pick me, shall go gold digger. <laughs> okay. It's like, which one do you want? You are the prize. You are the prize, pick me. You know what I say? You are the one deal. Now, nah, if you watch The Matrix, this dude Morpheus told Neo he is the one. Not the prize, not someone, but the one. Now, how hard is it for a woman to understand that she is a prize? Okay, I'm like, you know what? Y'all better be glad I don't think I'm the prize. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. What if you're ugly? Ain't no such thing as an ugly woman. With all these lipsticks and foundations and powders and cosmetics out here today and wigs, you don't have to be ugly, baby. That's a choice these days. It's a choice to be ugly these days with all this stuff out here. You got spider lashes, eyelashes, eyebrows, contour, Wigs, fake baby hair tattoos, fingernails, perfumes, waist cinchers, fake booties, butt pads out here. You have no excuse. You don't have to be ugly. That's the choice now. 
Just like you don't have to be stupid because we have Google. Okay, so you don't have to be ugly. That's a choice these days. <laughs> the spider laughing. <laughs> but literally, you don't have to be ugly. Like if you just put in some effort and some work and work on yourself and try to make you yourself look like you think you should look, then you have a choice. Okay. There, there are people out here transforming from a grown, burly man into this beautiful woman calling themselves drag. So you, you just, you just need to put in more work. That's it. There ain't no such thing as an ugly woman these days because you got too many options. Um, what if he scared you'll murder and divorce him? for his money after marriage. It's always good to have for a man to have a level of fear around you. You know? So um I would just joke around and say, well, you know, how you gonna, you know, you you shouldn't fear me. <laughs> you know, it's healthy for a man to have a little bit of fear. That's fine. Keep him on keep him acting right. Okay. Sprinkle sprinkle. <laughs> how to follow your tips without tricking men um find a man that's in a wheelchair find a man who's super desperate find a man who you can be honest with and they won't care because they're that desperate okay because it's it's hard to get what you want out of guys without being a little bit dishonest so you gonna have to find one that really desperate <laughs> and tell him all the truth. He'd be like, "That's okay. I take what I can get." Okay. Y'all are so sweet asking me how to, how to get a man and get what you want out of a man without tricking him. Make sure he's desperate. Okay, there you go. You have. To like these sugar daddies a little bit because you will spend time with them. Yeah, they got to be a little cool. If, if they can make you laugh, if they're a little different, if you could tolerate them, you know, that's good. You said men lie, women lie. If you're if you're afraid to lie, <laughs> that's weird. Like people will lie about other things, but when it comes to dating, they feel like they shouldn't lie. When the man breaks off out of when a man starts a conversation with a lie but y'all up here was asking how not to be dishonest and trick man and the first words out their mouths are lies when it comes to trying to date you girl like what <laughs> the first couple of words out of their mouth are literally lies So I don't understand why you don't feel like you should just give them the same thing they gave you. <laughs> you say you lie back. Okay. There you go. So you say, I guess I'll stop lying. <laughs> you ain't got to stop lying. We know y'all lying. You can always get caught, Jody. Jojo. <laughs> Your ex told you his daughter was his niece. Oh my goodness. People will lie to themselves before they will lie to someone else. Wow. You lied to, you lied to your husband at the beginning several times. He found out and still gave me a ring. Okay. The more you lie, the better you become at it. Okay. <laughs> so yes like we're not you know honestly I don't know what other type of YouTube channels are out there but is if there is a channel that has morally upright you know 
standards of how to get a man to, to do whatever you want without lying to them, tricking them, manipulating them and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's going to take you a long time. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to help y'all get what y'all need to get to faster over here. Okay. There you go. You're going to be a long time. You might end up paying on dates because <laughs> you, you try to do everything correct and honest. Never tell too much about yourself or about your family and finances. Exactly. Anyway, y'all. Thank y'all. I got to go. <laughs> Hold on. Let me leak y'all one more thing before I go. You said, oh, no. Y'all, y'all know I got to go. Do you write down the lies to keep up with them? If you're smart, you can memorize all that stuff. But yeah, write it down if you're not good at lying or memorizing lies. Like I'm a, I'm naturally creative, so I'm going to remember everything I said because it's, to me, it's real. <laughs> okay. It's a story I made up. It's a real story, you know. Keep it like a story. If you, you know, you tell a story, you remember the story and all the details. That's what it is. Make up a whole character. Make up a whole story behind the character. Make up relatives for the character. Make up problems that the relatives are going to have. Make up fake pets. Girl, get your right on. Get your journal and write your whole story on from beginning to end so that you're guaranteed to get money all up and through that story. You know, when your when your fake animal who doesn't exist needs surgery, that's that's some cash right there. When your fake aunt Ethel passed away, that's some cash right there. You know. When you pay great grandpa's mortgage, that's some cash right there. When you lose your two carat diamond earring, that's a gift. When you drop your favorite bottle of perfume because you on the phone with him. Or he startled you trying to FaceTime you. There goes some new perfume. Okay. Write your story and how to get money all up and through the story. Make up some fake family members. And once you get the hang of it, it's going to be like it's real and it's normal. <laughs> and the good thing is, like, after all is said and done, all those family members gone. They didn't die because they're old. And uh, that's it. Yes, be the author of your own life. Which one of my books will help you get a man? <sighs> this one. I bring nothing to the table. A level up concept by Shira Seven. You can get it linked at the top with all my other books. This will help you to get a man that provides and don't turn into a pick Misha or a Barbara the Builder. Yes, this is the book you need. Also, there's a book uh, on ebook form called Too Pretty to Pay Bills. That one's up there as well, but that's the one you need. Okay. Uh, too pretty. Oh, thank you, Georges. You bought Too Pretty to Pay Bills? Yes. What if he finds out about the lie and thinks you don't love him? He ain't going to find out about the lie because you're going to be too busy convincing him that you love him. That's why it has to be a real story as if you truly believe it. That's why you have to get fake phone calls from Aunt Ethel. That's why you have to talk about her on the first and second date. That's why you have to go fly to see her. Or fly to go to her funeral so you can get that airport money. That's why you got to really make it believable. How's he going to find out you lied? What's he going to go do? Look up your family tree? <laughs> you know? 
And if you really want to get into it, go find an obituary with somebody named Ethel on it and cut it out and bring it back. I don't know. Well, you know, you smart. You know how to do this. Pretend it's a school project. Y'all be all up in the school project doing research, cutting out uh, articles, cutting and pasting stuff, making diagrams. Y'all can do this. I promise. <laughs> Make it a project if y'all are, if y'all are, you know, in college. Like, oh, I gotta make it believable. Then make it believable. Y'all swear y'all got degrees, educated, but can't figure out how to make a lie sound real. <laughs> Do your research. Add in some graphs and charts and obituaries and. <laughs> Honestly, when you call into work and, and say you don't want to go into work because you know some something happened in the family or a family member died, you know you lied. It's like that, but on a grander scale. <laughs> okay. Don't you think karma is real? No, I don't. Because there's too many people out here walking around fancy free and then done wrong. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't think karma is real at all. I think you create the life you want. Okay. So, for example, I think karma is a, de a, a way to deter people from doing what's best for them sometimes. Or what's beneficial to them sometimes. Like, what would the karma be of lying about a dead relative? Or a relative that doesn't even exist? He gonna lie to you about a relative that don't exist so he could go out of town? Good, bye. As long as you pay them bills. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> so, you know, I don't see I don't see anything wrong with it. It's, it's a way to get him to spend his money and invest in you. Mm -hmm. And if he really likes you and it leads to, you know, more money being spent, a ring, a marriage and all that kind of stuff, it, then it will probably be worth it. Right. To him. You say you got to feel it in your heart. Like, I don't like some of y'all. Like, honestly, let me tell you all something. Y'all are too soft and full of guilt in order Y'all are too soft and full of guilt to, to pull some of this off. So until you're a seasoned veteran in the game, do the small things that you can do. <laughs> okay. You had to let go of your guilt and the good so good at finessing sometimes you feel good <laughs> no because they like it like men like you to finesse them they like it they appreciate it it makes them feel masculine and manly that they can help you <laughs> so for example like if you were just to come straight out and ask a man i need some money for shopping I need I need some money for this. I need some money for that. I want a purse. I want a purse. You know, he might think you're a greedy gold digger type, right? But if you if 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 Aunt Ethel, you know, uh, you got to go to her funeral. He's he's contributing to to you so that you can mourn properly and not have to worry about you know how you're gonna pay. So he's doing a good deed in his heart. He feels good about himself. His vibration is higher. He thinks he's a good person. And he thinks he's really helping you. OK, and so when you drop your bottle of nice perfume, he feels like it's his fault because you dropped the bottle of perfume because he was trying to call you. And um, so he's going to replace it. So he feels that he's you know able to do that and gift you at the same time. OK, so he feels like, OK, you helped your your great grandma pay her mortgage. You're such a good person. And, you know, you want to return the favor. Uh, you know, uh, pay it forward. So you're going to help her out because she's a good, decent woman. That's the kind of wife you want, right? 
That's what he's feeling. So what is wrong with that? He's doing good in the world. Y'all know when y'all see those commercials with the, the animals shivering or, you know, um, you know, them, them commercials where they're begging for money to send to their charity and only like two dollars go and you sent 50. Same thing. You felt good about yourself. You did it for you to, to make a difference. And you felt good after you put that payment in and they only got two dollars. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That's how it works. <laughs> And they don't feel guilty, believe. They don't. Oh, well, we have to deduct the price of this commercial and the actors we paid and the kennel we paid to put their dogs outside and spray them with water in the cold. We got to pay them. We got to also pay for the editor of this commercial and the ad space. So after all of that, they only get $2. All right. Do they feel guilty? No. So get your money, ladies. And when they ask you what you bring to the table, I bring nothing to the table. Just me. I'm the guest of honor. Mm-hmm. All right, y'all, I'm going for real this time. I'll see y'all later.